I'm no longer muted. No, you aren't. Welcome aboard, everybody, to the Tabletop Express here for Call Aboard. And it's a very special episode of Call Aboard. Anthony, uh, unfortunately, couldn't be with us tonight, but we wanted to have three people all the same. So we got a special guest in the house tonight for the for the entire oh. show, and that's Mr. Rao Gaming. And, and I saw just lots of hearts right there. Uh, if you do this at the video camera, it makes lots of hearts. Really? Apparently, apparently with my webcam, I... Oh, no, there he goes. There you go. Is that a StreamYard thing? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Ryan can't do it right, apparently. I, guess I have no heart, guys. <laughs> hey, gents. How's it going? Oh, man. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, yes, it, it's great to have you here. Uh, for those of you yeah. who don't know Call Aboard and the Tabletop Express, my name is Chris. To I'm my Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. And Ryan. We got and I'm also Ryan. Yes. We got two Ryans in the house. Uh, Ryan's this is outnumber. Call... Yeah. <laughs> this is Call Aboard, though. And Call Aboard is our call in show that we do every other week here on the Tabletop Express. Uh, and at the end of the month, our topic is always the same, and it's the question, what's on your table or what was on your table this month? And we're going to talk about the games that we played this month, and we want to hear from you about the games you played this month. So uh, with that, uh, I and will. What welcome... a month it's been. Oh, man, it's it's there's been some good stuff on the table in my house. Ryan, you've uh, in terms of that, I should say Espen, uh, you've been a little busier in the Ghostbusters world. So how many games did you actually get to the table? Uh, I just hit my 10th game like uh, earlier this week. So yeah. So it's, it's, uh, it's been, it's been a month. It's been a smaller month. <laughs> <for you. It's, laughs> I like that. I can also say that it's also been a month, but in different ways. Oh, well let's, uh, let's get into that fun thing. That is the games. And uh, I want to note before we start, of course, something very important. It's a call-in show. So above us, you'll will see call dashboard.com. If you want to be part of the show, all you got to do is call dashboard.com in your browser, in your phone, and it's going to bring you into our queue. Uh, we uh, will uh, we'll say hello and uh, introduce ourselves and bring you in accordingly uh, based on how many people are in the queue before you. Uh, and uh, other than that, it's that easy, that easy to call in. And we're very and bonus points if you call in and your name is Chris, because then <laughs> we'll have a 2v2. <laughs> oh man, right? Ooh, I like it. Well, you know? we need to team mode. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. We've teamed up, you know, I believe you were on a stream when we had a guest some time ago. It was, yeah, it was, um, moderator Chris. From yeah, moderator people. Chris was here, and I and ironically, all night sure long, you all and I long. teamed up for that, Mr. Yep. Rao. We 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 actually teamed up. So, I'm just gonna that say. was a great that was a great time. I remember that. That was a lot of lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was some good times. Uh, since uh, since Aspen, you didn't play as many this month. I if if you like, I'm happy to get the ball rolling here. Yeah, and and, and, and luckily, game. I have the website. It's called Board Game Geek. Never so, heard like, of it. it it's, it's <laughs> You're making this games. stuff up. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's man. pretty cool, guys. I just found out about it. <laughs> well, it's look. a funny story because my what when I tell my wife that there's a website called Board Game Geek, she's like, "That's not a real thing." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Oh no, it is the hub. It is, it is the, the place where all the cool kids go and hang out." <laughs> That's true. It it is definitely a hub. That's for sure. A hub of a lot of information, and. I'm actually on it right now because my logged plays from uh, BG Stats, my favorite stat app, go over there. That's so an app. I wanted to <laughs> note that I played a game uh, that has been talked about in our Discord that people were waiting for to come out. There was a lot of conversation about it because it was compared, and, I, and to some extent, rightfully so, to another game uh, also already on the market. And that is a game called Wormspan. Mm. And I want to first mention this game is one that I have played solo and I have played it with three people. So I've played it in, in two different ways. 
Uh, I know this game was one that, and, and I'll just note designer Connie Vogelman, uh, publisher of Stonemeyer Games, and uh, Connie also Apiary, which is desperately needs to be played. Really, also known as Bees in Space. Yes, Bees in Space is 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 our code name for that one, right? Uh, but Wormspan, you know, logically you see Wormspan, and you saw the reviews, you saw the feedback before, you saw some quite frankly, heinous comments about the game before anyone had ever played it. Um, but then this game comes out and I got to tell you, I love seeing it has an 8.1 right now on BGG because honestly, I played this game and we'll do a full review at some point here on the channel. Uh, you've got to play it, Espen, so we can't do it yet. But I like this better than Wingspan. But at the same time, I want to not make the Wingspan comparison to the level that some mm -hmm. of the early reviews did because there's just more to this game and though it does improve upon things in that tableau style board that wingspan offered it and it and it does do that yes this game is a better experience for me and i mm -hmm. liked wingspan i'm gonna say that i enjoyed wingspan i i did but this one adds cards you're gonna be laying down which are these caverns that you're essentially excavating uh, that are give you immediate immediate resources. You're not rolling dice in this game to get your resources. You're picking a track, and as you're going along with your explorer, you're going to get resources when you land on certain spaces, and you've got the choice. So mm. your collection of resources is more strategic. In addition, there's a guild board that as you're going around it, based on, again, where you're sending your explorer and different card actions, you're going to be also getting uh additional resources and different ways to score points this game for me hit different and wingspan is a game that i played but slowly over time was getting less and less played i don't think this will fall under that same same scenario in my house i feel like this game is going to and I don't know if my wife's going to jump to it because my wife loves the birds, right? But mm -hmm. this is a game that I would rather play. And I feel like the replayability is just higher with this game. The comparison is fair in the name and the core DNA, but it is a very different game. Mm -hmm. And if you, to the point that if you like the dice chucking, et cetera, you can own both and be fine. Um, but I think it's a very different game. And I think it is a more strategic game. I think it's a, overall better experience and and i've really enjoyed it so i'm looking forward to playing this with you and seeing what you think about it because i i know you, wingspan wasn't necessarily your cup of tea if i remember correctly but yeah uh, but i think you'll like this one a lot better sure and um i saw by the way rachel is saying that she hopes to see the guild board incorporated into future wingspan expansion somehow and and the thing is i, I want to ask you because i haven't played wormspan um and i know one of the selling points i guess for wingspan is that it is more of an approachable euro style board game does is wormspan just as approachable or is it a step up i think i feel like it's a half step up yes yeah, yeah, yeah like it's not a huge step up i but i also struggle to think of and i don't know mr you tell me if you agree with yeah. this I struggle to think of Wingspan also in that kind of welcoming space as much as a lot of other games out there. Like, I feel oh, like you've got to be willing to grab. Someone's got to be able to pay attention for an hour and a half. And I just, it feels like it's already a half step up from, you know, kicking That's off fair. a game like King Domino or something. You know what I mean? Where I, I know I can say, here's your five rules. Like, there's just more to Wingspan, in my opinion, than people talk about and, and kind of let on yeah i i just I, 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 that's my take no I, I i kind of agree with that a little bit because when i when i think of my first gaming experiences or the games that got me into the hobby um wingspan it like you said i think that it's just a slight more in that complexity level there's a little bit more going on than just say Hey, put down a tile or hey, go grab some cards. This one's like there's there's actual stuff that you actually have to pay attention to and you have to read and you have to there's lots of different icons or information that you have to decipher. 
Uh, my comparison to Wormspan was the well, the one bonus I had is that I liked the solo mode better in Wormspan than I did yeah. in Wingspan. Um, it was a lot more easier to manage. Um, but my one knock on Wormspan was that I thought that it went a little too long. I think I, that the game, it does go longer than Wingspan. And, and I think they, and they do advertise that um, yeah. as well. I believe it's like uh, in this one, they think they are advertising, I think 40 to 45 minutes per player rather than the half an hour uh, per player uh, count where they were uh, for wingspan. And we noticed that at a game night that I hosted uh, at my local game store, we had a five player game going and it lasted almost all night like mm. for the entire game night. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to play this with more than th- three was a nice number. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I felt like that was a happy medium. I- I'll play it with four at some point, but I felt like three was a happy number. And I actually think it'll, I think it will play really well at two. To be honest, I actually could see this hitting my table at two quite effectively, uh, which I know, you know, Wingspan had, had the whole Asia expansion, which was th- supposed to hit the two player side mm-hmm. of things, too. So I, I need to play this at more counts. And that's the other reason why personally I want to play it a little bit more. But I'm with you. The solo mode I really enjoyed probably does run a little longer um, because there are some additional things to think about because you can think about, am I going to get a key do this to start? getting a cave etc and then play the cave down and get my resources which gives me something you know so but yeah there was a lot more in the five player count there was a lot more hey when i played this everybody gets something there was a lot more resources flowing around the table at the five player count because we saw those cards more often and they were being played more often and therefore everybody was very flush with resources i believe in the five player game this everybody was starting to get to the point where I got so much stuff. What am I actually going to spend it on? So everybody would sit down with their hands and cards and see which one am I going to put down now? And (laughs) yeah. So uh, to me, like I say, I'm going to, I'm going to play some more. I will sold. I will continue to solve this, which I never did with wingspan. I never Mm -hmm. had the interest. I tried. I didn't love it. This one, I will do it. And again, the comparison, I mean, span is in both of the names. It's clearly based off the DNA of wingspan. You can't take that away, but I think it's, It is a, it's still a very different game in so many ways. So I just wanted to, I really wanted to highlight that. And I'm excited. Like I said, I'm excited that I tried this one and I liked it. And if you gave me a choice between the two, my collection, I would probably keep Wormspan over Wingspan as a whole. um, If you take out themes and things like that um, for when it comes to the table, because my wife obviously loves the birds and I'm not allowed to get rid of Wingspan, I was told. So (laughs) I didn't even suggest, I was just told you're not getting rid of Wingspan. but yeah, I, I was enjoyed also, it quite a bit. I was also told the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my copy of Wormspan is now in another household. I um get I sold my copy to a friend because his wife really, 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 really wanted Wormspan because she's super into dragons and everything, loves the wingspan experience, super into dragons, needed it. They didn't get in on the pre-orders or anything like that. It was all sold out and stuff. So I said. I'm going to be able to get this at another time in the fu- in the future. I will sell you my copy. I will pick it up again later on type thing just so that you can enjoy it and make your wife happy because more wives that are happy in the gaming world. Yay. Yeah. Those keep the spouses happy, right? Keep the spouses happy. By the way, Pablo is saying that uh, you need to try it. Like Mike Delicio, I was not into the art. A lot of dragons looked almost chibi Pokemon like to me. Um, oh, which okay. I could see the chiviness in this picture, you know. Yeah, and there, there was a lot of different styles. There was definitely yeah. a lot of different styles. Much like the uh, wingspan draw was like every card is different. Yeah, right. And those are actually modeled after actual birds because I wanted to bring that up. Right, mm-hmm. <laughs> they have a uh, a dragon fact book. So are they basing this off of like a lot of dragon lore? Is there like a whole... So what I believe they did with this, because I think one knock on Wingspan was the fact that there was all that information at the mm-hmm. bottom. Like they, it was like not game relevant information. It's kind of like, you know, the flavor text. Sure. Um, so I think to open it up a little bit, give them a little bit more graphic design, uh, they decided to put that type of information into like a dragon lore. Uh, yeah, this dragon fact book about mm-hmm. these different types of dragons. And I think some of them have some historical like information, like why is this 
type of dragon or what, what culture does this type of dragon originate from and my only issue with the book was it didn't give all the information from the card like it could have given me more of the card related information it gave some um mm -hmm. but it wasn't like every piece of it so that would be my only probably gripe mm -hmm. with it like yeah like it's got the size you can see the size and the cost and the nest but there's other information like the ability of it um i actually would have liked if it was a resource with the ability like or like an explainer I, I but again i think it was what you're talking about it's it was meant to do what it did so take that or leave it i didn't even look at it um i'm good i'm good yeah so that with, with with them putting it into the book left them more room for the graphic design on the cards on that note the text on the cards could still have been a little bit larger because there is mm -hmm. still dead space at the bottom of those on some of those cards that have not much of it. There, there's still a dead space that they could have made the font just a little bit. Yes. Just a tiny bit, just a little mm. bit more. I agree. I agree. But that, that my friends was worm span. One. I definitely want nice to talk one. about, we'll talk about it in the future for sure because uh, it's definitely one that uh, will drop a review at some point when everyone has played, but that was Wormspan, like I said, Connie Vogelman, and I know we got to cover Connie, Connie's uh, game Apiary at some point as well. Connie, by the way, uh, was, full disclosure, someone we got to talk to here on the Tabletop Express through Creators Corner. So, uh, And I've got to meet Connie, and uh, I, I really appreciate design choices that Connie has made. So I'm looking forward to what Connie continues to do and uh, see what comes next from Connie. And spoiler alert, if you are a Board Game Hot Takes podcast listener, Connie is going to be their guest on this upcoming Monday's episode. Oh, nice. Holy moly. So there you go. I did not know that. So that I, I got insider information. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I don't know if I was supposed to say that out loud, but it's out there now. Spread oh, the love. Geez. Spread the love. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Carefully you sell Board Game Hot Takes. Yeah. <laughs> Can't uh, keep me, he can't keep me quiet. I'm going to spill all the beans. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could I could bring up a game now if you'd like. Yeah, you, you if you want to take it, and I'll, well, you go for it. Get prepared to bring up a game. I'll just friendly reminder, call dashboard.com if you want to call in and be part of the show. And, and uh, we will say hello to you on the back end before we bring it in and uh, bring you in to chat with us. So. So we don't fight hard. No, <laughs> no, that's true. Um, so as you know, March was busy for me. Um, very much so away from board games, but I did get a new hotness in and I made sure that this hotness guy right over there, it's, it's you, <laughs> um, would set aside some time and play with me because I was like, you need to play this game because I know how much you love Empires of the North and there's similarities with this game. It's a totally different game. Yeah. But you need to play when it comes in Imperium Horizons. Yep. Uh, so this is designed by Nigel Buckle, David Turtsey, published by Osprey Games. Um, and this is a deck building civilization game. Um, so in this game, you are going to be basically controlling a civilization and another, and you're going up against your opponent who is also doing the same thing. And a largely, it's not really heavy player interaction. Well, there is. There's like there's a good amount of player interaction, but not like intense, like I'm going to directly attack you uh, player interaction. But each deck has a faction of completely different uh, asymmetric powers. And you're going to just be competing to get the most points. And you do that largely by collecting a lot of different cards, filling up a tableau, trying to achieve different uh, uh, combos. And eventually, after like an hour and a half, you count up your score. Right? That's pretty. That was my least favorite part, to figure out the score. Yes. <laughs> and that's the thing. So I, I did mention this to you. There's an app that you could just take a picture of your end game board and it'll just do the score for you. Which that is sounds phenomenal. much more optimal than, but I don't know but... if it supports <laughs> Imperium horizon. So we just did it. Yeah. You know, just straight up calculators. 
Um, but, you, but can I point out you got you had got this in and we played with new stuff. So I know there's other this was we played with some new stuff. stuff. Yeah, we we stayed we played with some of the new stuff. We haven't explored yeah. this, I think, to its full I'm trying to find there's, a good picture. There, there was other bit. things we did not add in when we played this, so I, I know it's one thing we wanted to play again. And I will just say I did really enjoy this. I, I enjoy games like this. I think the comparison of me liking Empires of the North is logical because you do think of those different civilizations and they all play very differently, right? So that's where that comparison comes from. But two vastly, ultimately different games when it comes down to gameplay. Uh, and it what I think it ran about two or two hours. Our play, well, we did it. We did a teach, and then um, so the game comes with an expansion built into it. This one, Imperium Horizons, the trade expansion, and the rule book just like Imperium Classics and Imperium Legends, is not the greatest. <laughs> it doesn't... <laughs> it's it, it's a better reference book than a rule book. Um, oh, so, no. with this rule book, a lot of things are kind of like... It's only in one single spot, and if you miss that spot, then you're going to be toast for a little bit. So yeah. I ended up playing with a faction that required the expansion to be played. <laughs> And and then we realized, wait a minute, how am I supposed to be doing this? I don't know what the this term is. So we ended up just change. I just changed my faction as soon as the game started to a completely different faction. So we had yep. a hiccup right in the beginning, um, and then there were some real clarifications with some of the cards that were still included that have a tiny icon on them that says you got to use it when you're using the expansion versus the one tiny icon where you use it when you're not using the expansion. Again. <laughs> It was like, oh my gosh! It, like when I say two been... hours, the actual game was about or was around two. It was still around an hour and a half to yeah hour forty five. Even with the take the mess about right, like I, but it was a mess. I'm not gonna lie. It, it, we dove right in though. This is the thing. We dove right in. I mean, I was opening up the box. I was glad we tried this. I'm looking forward to trying this again and to see mm -hmm. if it see what that experience is like. Now I've got a game under my belt. Yeah. Uh, and and it's one of those things where when I play it again, I think I'll I'll have real clear feelings of what I think about this one. But I liked it a lot uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the different you know mechanics of of my character. I had a very basic character, um, so I'm next time I play, I'd like to probably explore someone who's maybe a little bit more advanced uh, and just play around with some different mechanics. And uh, yeah, it was I was glad we hit this hit the table because you've been telling me about this. Get this series for a long time and it just hasn't happened yet so yeah now, it, now when we did our uh favorites of 2021 this was my game of the year mm. that's so much i like this game a lot um and then it was like an addendum because i played marvel champions like the year after and i'm like oh, okay that was a 2021 <laughs> release as well too so that's pretty good too <laughs> <laughs> um but, good. but imperium classics and and legends were was fantastic so i I am still looking forward to playing more Imperium Horizons. If you like classics and legends, it's really more of the same. It's largely more of the same. It's just, again, little nuances for the trade expansion, which I haven't done yet. Um, so if you're familiar with classics and legends and you have classics and legends, I would recommend starting with some of the simpler decks that don't require the expansion and use... Yeah the base cards from classics and legends, which the game also comes with cards you could put in to kind of uh, replace some of the existing ones to make it compatible with future expansions. That sounds right to me. Have you so played I, this one yet? I am not familiar. So I've seen this around. I've seen people or I've heard people talk about it. I still have zero idea of what kind of game it actually is. It looks like okay, so it looks like you kind of like your civilization's like a deck of cards. So it's largely deck building. It's largely okay, okay. deck building. Um, however, every civilization has their own separate deck. And mm -hmm. you have base cards, but then you also have a technology deck and then like an advanced civilization deck. I forget what the actual terms are, but yep. if you look uh over here is that tech like that advancement deck, and then this is the technology deck. And basically, 
every time you have to shuffle your deck, you take one of these cards and add it to your deck. And certain cards, like a historic figure, like if you're playing as the Romans, there's a Julius Caesar card. You do his effect, and then you tuck him under your player card, which is considered your history, which means it's like your trash pile, but mm. it's also could score you points through the game. Yep. Upon that, there's also the shared market over here where you could take cards, and you're either going to be taking cards and adding them into your discard pile, standard procedure, but um, you're, you might be also be taking penalty cards that are directly underneath them called unrest cards, and those unrest cards are going to be me- negative victory points. Um, so it's a big balance because you're trying to make sure you don't have a lot of unrest cards because there's an unrest card deck pile. And if that pile ever runs out, the game immediately ends and the player who has the least number of unrest cards wins. Oh. Otherwise, if you get to one of the end game scoring conditions, then you do proper end game scoring points. Um, it's long. It's a long deck builder. And I, and I have heard that. And I think that's why I never jumped really straight into it. Yeah. When but I, I, about- I am going to recommend this because I know you love solo gaming. Yep. I think it's actually best solo. Perfect. The solo mode in this is on point, like very on point. And you you know when you're playing a long game and you're concerned about the other players because you might be taking too long with your turn? Like Mage Knight. Mage Knight's a perfect example of that, right? You don't want to play Mage Knight with someone else because you're, part of the fun of Mage Knight is looking at your five cards and figuring out the perfect combo for them, which could take like 10 minutes. And... You're, you know, you're, you're alienating mm-hmm. your opponent. That's just, you know, like, hey, can I go? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, I get that. Solo mode for this is pretty solid, super solid, and it's very the the combos are very satisfying, and mm-hmm. the solo mode is also very challenging too. It's very hard to kind of win in solo mode, and there and different civilizations have different uh, um, rankings as well too. Like there's level one through five. Which right. is where I make that which, which is again why I say that comparison to Empress of the North. Yeah, there's difficulty. It, it, it's the right. same kind of thing. There's just more challenging, you know, groups. So, um, yeah, I. Oh yeah, and right, and and Jeremiah's bringing up the artwork. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic. Yeah, the art, the arts is awesome. It's really well done with this one. So, and the best thing too. Because I have Imperium Classics and Legends, and they all fit in the box, in one box. Imperium Horizons has everything for Imperium Horizons and room for the other cards as well, too. Mm. I was going to ask, I was going to ask, did we, did, was that, that was a, in the long run, officially everything will go in that box for you. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's, look, when I was trying to find pictures of this game, most of the <laughs> pictures are about the storage system and how fantastic it is. Wow. So, like, okay, yeah. I get it. You can fit everything in. It's pretty cool. So, yeah. So, as a newbie, which one would you recommend to pick yeah. up first? Um, any of the three are great, honestly. Okay. To get which is cheapest. If you want to just get okay. one, get, get what, what is cheapest. If you really like it, you're going to get all three. Um, <laughs> that but... doesn't sound like me at all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I highly recommend trying it out, especially if you get it at a cheap price or play it someone or if you're in a gaming group and someone has it i'm sure they'll lend lend it to you yeah you know so it's cool the thing is too you learn the solo mode then you can play optimally with other players too yeah it's great and that right was on. imperium horizons and uh and and before, you said that the rule book is equally as difficult across all three of them yeah they're pretty bad okay. um <laughs> they're pretty bad i mean the thing is this they're very they're better reference books than rule books that makes and sense. there's some great teach videos online um, that you could that you could watch. Like like you go watch the rules for Imperium Classics or Legends and get the gist of it for Horizons. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there there's that. Right on. Yeah. Well, before uh, Mr. Rao, you bring something to the table here. I do want to say, friendly reminder, of course, call dashboard.com to call in. Uh, and, uh, also before I forget, just a heads up in advance for everyone that tonight, I think, what are you doing what over there? Doing? What the, how, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Tonight there's a party, everyone. I can do thumbs up too. 
<laughs> is that what it was? I don't know how the word. Anyways, um, here the, the hearts, right? Uh, yep. Is that the hearts working? There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh! Uh, Can Ryan get it going this time? <laughs> I think it's his one pinky. I think your one pinky is just. <laughs> oh man! Can I make a heart. <laughs> there used to be a thing about double thumbs. There we go. All right. Oh my goodness! I didn't know these were things. Uh, anyways, <laughs> uh, now not to be distracted here. Uh, yeah, the the balloons are better. Yes, balloons are much better. <laughs> the night is young, Dan. The night yeah. is young. The night is young. <laughs> I I was gonna say though that uh, two reviews tonight. Two reviews. So, um, had just uh, and then we've got on the table. It's sitting over there. What, the, nope. what is the game I just freaking played there, Ryan? Um, Sky Tier Horde. Yes, Sky Team Horde. Sky Tier Horde. Sky Tier Horde. Sky Tier Horde. Yes, uh, we got Sky Tier Horde uh, as a review tonight. I have a chance to play that this week uh, because we did want to cover that one, and uh, we got one other game uh, up for review tonight as well. So those are going to be coming up later this evening. And uh, as always, uh, and then when Anthony comes back, we've got some other reviews, but we wanted to hold off on a few. Uh, because we mm. played a bunch of games with Anthony, so we're gonna. The other game was like that. a CFU, by the way. Yes, well, I was getting there. Oh, sorry. But I was trying to build legacy... suspense. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. The, the legacy of you, by the home. way, we're lucky. I'm happy to say, Mister Al will be joining us in that uh, because he has also played for that entire campaign. So, mm -hmm. but with that, a perfect lead in to you, Mister Rao Gaming, and what you've been playing this week. Oh month. my gosh, what have I paid this month? I got a lot of plays. Um, this might add that I was at Dice Tower West way back at the beginning of March, maybe no more like the middle of March, but that was a fantastic experience. Got to play a lot of great stuff, meet a lot of great people. It was just exactly what I needed to recharge my batteries in board gaming space and content creation space. It was absolutely fantastic. Felt like I was in college again where I got up started gaming at 7 a.m., went till 2 a.m., got back at it at 7 a.m. again, and it was just like, fan. it was fantastic. And of course, it was freaking Las Vegas, so there's everything going on around you at the same time. Uh, fantastic experience. One thing that I did manage to get played a couple times there, and then I have recently acquired and have been playing actually a bunch of it lately, is um, Aqua biodiversity in the ocean is one thing that I want to bring up uh, this time around because, and I don't know what it is about this that I keep getting drawn into it. Well, I know one thing, the solo mode is very quick and very snappy. Mm. I can get a solo game done in like 15, 20 minutes is pretty much how it is. There's not as much AP in this one, but essentially, in aqua biodiversity in the... I'm just going to call it aqua. Do I have to say biodiversity in no, the ocean all the time? <laughs> okay, I was sure. hoping so. Not to be confused with the hit band. Well, yeah, you gotta, you got to have that classic Barbie, Barbie girl, girl and... Yeah. Uh, I was Dr. disappointed Jones, it was Dr. Jones. not that aqua. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Jones. Jones. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Anywho... You may see a lot of hexagon tiles with some patterns on it and stuff like that. You may be thinking this is very reminiscent of a game called Cascadia that took the world by storm uh, not too long ago. And you're not wrong. Uh, I see a lot of the DNA of a Cascadia-like game in here. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be drafting these uh, hexagon tiles and adding them to your tableau, going to be called your Coral Reef. And the different colors, if you manage to get a hexagon together, uh, you, can make, you can get these. Uh, you can kind of see them on the left-hand side. There's different colors of hexagons. There's like yellow clownfish and pink seahorses and uh, purple um, urchins and sea turtles and crabs and jellyfish. Well, if you create a hexagon of that color, that animal will now go into that hexagon shape essentially scoring you some points. Now, the whole bi biodiversity thing comes in. Well, if you can create a shape like these, there's these kind of like these bigger tiles, like there's the stingray and there's some dolphins. 
if you can create that shape of different small animals, you'll get to put those that bigger animal on top of those ones. And now it's you now you've scored bigger points because you managed to, to attract these bigger animals to the ecosystem, I guess is what they're calling. Along the left hand side too, where those animal tiles are, there are point scoring opportunities. I don't know if you can zoom in on those kind of like there's like that white uh, and then like light blues. Let me see if there's like a better picture. Yeah. Anyways, those are like these guys point scoring. Uh, no, those are the large animals. You can do. Oh, okay. Oh, the one right above it. Oh, yeah, right above. Yeah, that one. Cool. So these are point scoring opportunities where, and there's like a whole bunch of them. There's a big stack. I think there's like 24 different ones that you can just shuffle up, randomize and assign a small animal to that ecosystem. Essentially, these are just going to be point scoring opportunities for, Hey, if I get like those small Barracuda tiles, well, each of those small Barracuda tiles are going to be worth an extra two points for every three, uh, pink seahorse I have in my ecosystem at the end of the game. And so there's kind of like a mix and match type thing. Really snappy. You play, I think it's 17 turns in total for the entire game. So you're only going to draft 17 tiles into your ecosystem. Then you're going to most points uh, wins. You score points for literally everything in this game. Uh, the solo mode is great because if you look at the solo mode inside the rule book, it looks exactly the same as any solo mode made by AEG and flat out games for like mm. Cascadia, Calico, Verdant, any of those games, the solo mode layout in the rule book looks exactly the same. I wonder if it's the same uh, people that developed the solo mode for it because it, it looks exactly like exactly like even the wording they use scenarios, modifications, mm. achievements. They use the exact same terminologies across them all. And slow I've been sucked. Slow designers for this one. I'm looking up as we speak because I'm intrigued as you say that. Um, yeah. And I've been sucked into the solo mode for this one because much like those other ones, I like working through the scenarios because the scenarios really kind of give you ex um, exposure to all of the different uh, point scoring opportunities, like all those different tiles. And my only complaint so far is that I've played the first five scenarios and I have had no problem reaching the point threshold that you're supposed to get mm. in order to pass it. Like, but like, I'm not even like, like I'm smashing, like I had to look back, like, am I getting a rule wrong? Because this says, Oh, the point threshold is uh 65 points. Can you score 65 points? I scored 90. Wow. In, the, in the in the game where like oh make sure that you try to get like 65 points but make sure you do this i'm like cool i did that and i still scored 88 oh my gosh type thing so i maybe once i get down to the later ones maybe it might be a little bit more tricky challenging but uh but i've been having a lot of fun like i like working my way through it the different point scoring tiles do make you think about how you're going to build out your tableau to Maybe that's what maybe I'm just so experienced as a gamer that I'm like, OK, those are the ways that I'm just going to score points. That's what I got to focus on. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to do that at the best of my abilities type thing. By, and the, then, by the way, to answer your question, soul designers are different. The uh, design, though, it's Sean Stank, uh, Stank, Stankiewicz, Stankiewicz. I, I always mispronounces uh, last name there, but he's from flat out. He's done most uh sean's done like calico he's done mm -hmm. verdant he did fit to print he did point city so like he's mm -hmm. been heavily involved these very different people and to that point i i will say those levels in in, in particular in calico are hard like it, yes. it, it's challenging and even fairly early on so um that is one calico thing that i do brain, appreciate man. about those games mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I just feel, but like I said, I'm going to work my way down the list again. Like, yeah, Calico, I think I'm only on like scenario like four and I've had yeah. the game for like for what, forever. And <laughs> I, I, yeah, I remember them being, but yeah, these ones, the solo threshold. Now, again, like there is the modifications. They suggest that you could make your game a little bit more challenging. Maybe I have to start, maybe I take on a scenario and I have to add in a modification or two just to try to challenge myself in 
the way that things go. But just the way that it's base written, um, it's a very good game. It's a it's a, a very solid tile laying, pattern building, everything like Chuck's. If you like Calico, uh, uh, Cascadia, I'm thinking you're really going to like this one as well. I'm just going to struggle in a little bit here whether or not if which, which which one. I don't think there's room for both in a collection. Is my mm-hmm. is my initial is my initial um, thought process on it. I have to play it some more. I'm going to play some Cascadia probably a little bit in a little bit as well, just to kind of really see because that. But I'm pretty sure my bearing here is that I don't think that there's room for both. The only thing that stands out to me is it looks like a mashup of Cascadia and Acropolis for me. That's yeah, that, I saw Jeremiah say say that in the chat too. But yeah, that it's a, probably because of that layering of the tiles on top of yeah. tiles. Yeah. Now the one oh, no, really Pablo, interesting Pablo said it. One of the really interesting things that they did with those bigger tiles that sit on top is that they are ever so slightly thinner that you can actually still see the tiles that are underneath mm. them. So you can That's still cool. see the colors because the colors that are underneath them still matter. Oh I yeah, I see they, that. Yeah. You can still see a little bit of the outline yeah. of the of the tiles underneath it. What? Oh my goodness. Uh, well, uh, zoomed uh, in. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, you can see, see you the can edges. Still see. Yeah. Well, that's neat. Yeah, because the colors that are still underneath still matter for different types of scoring opportunities. So I thought that was actually a really neat choice that they just made them just ever so slightly smaller widthwise so that you can see what's underneath them. That's good design to to keep that because it could very easily been covered up and something you have to pick up which would have been irritating so Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i haven't had to pick it i can always just i can just glance i'm like oh yeah there's yellow pink blue underneath there cool i don't know what this would be like i I would like to see this through like brian chandler's lenses or somebody else's lenses of Mm. the of, of the of the color choices that they made here um because the reef colors that they chose they did make them like different shapes on them, but the animal that goes with that color, there, there's there's no color, there's no coating on the like I said, let's just say the pink one there. There's the pink reef, but there's nothing on that pink seahorse tile that says that that should go on top of that yeah. pink reef. Got mm. it. So I just don't know. I I wouldn't know about the different colors on how that. But ever since, like, you know, reading Brian's uh, articles, him being very active in the chat, Sarah and Will from uh, Rolling With Two and their conversations, uh, Arwen, Cardboard Time, their conversations with, always has me trying to, I am very privileged. I don't see, I don't have color deficiency in my, when I'm playing games, but it's so now always in the top of my brain of like, mm, I wonder, I wonder what this game would be like. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! See, thanks for okay. sharing this one. This one, I, I would like to try this one. Um, mm-hmm. For what you're saying, if it if it did come down to a choice, hard to it'd be hard to usurp Cascadia. But uh, I I love the it, again. This is one of those things where I think, as you mentioned, I see really bright, vibrant colors. But it's true. What do mm-hmm. what, really how you know accessible is it? Great question. So mm-hmm. yeah, I I would I would say if this came out at the same time as Cascadia. Um, I wonder what one people would gravitate to because I think this one does have a little bit more ease of gameplay. Uh, I know Cascadia can get very convoluted sometimes with the different animal scorings. Mm -hmm, I think the scoring tiles in this game are a little bit more cut and dry and a little bit easier to follow. Um, So I I would say that this one has a slightly easier um, entry point to it than, than Cascadia, even though Cascadia took the world by storm with it's awesome gameplay as well. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, we do have a regular caller in the wings that we got to bring in here in just a moment. Uh, for those of you who have joined our channel before, you know him. It's Tyler. Hey, Hi, Tyler. How Tyler. How's it going? Good, good. How are you guys doing? Oh, pretty, pretty good. good. Chilling. I was a late joiner. I was, my daughter was not uh, cooperating with uh, going to bed tonight. So, and I was wow. in charge of that. So, I've been there. Uh, <laughs> been there. I but. I dibsed out of bedtime and joined in on this show tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah but, uh, so, 
Yeah, with Tyler. What's so look, it's I, I know you've played a bunch. Mm-hmm. I'm always intrigued <laughs> because at the end of the month, it's an open door. You know, there's it's yeah. it's what hit the table this month. So hit us with hit us with uh Here's the two or three games that you played. This was your best shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go. There's obviously there's one that everyone knows about, and I'll leave that to last just to talk about it at the very end. But uh, the I wanted to go through two, like a new game that I've played, that a newer game that I've played, and then a, like a new to me older version of a game. Um, so the first one is Scholars of the Self Tigers. So I was finally able to play that for the first time um like two three weeks ago and my neighbors had this copy of the game for so long and just haven't haven't been able to play it yet and finally um we were able to get it to the table it was just going to be me and him but a third joined us and i really enjoy garfield games as a whole um everything that they do it's a it's a heavier game but for when i was when we were playing it it didn't really feel all that complicated uh, with it. just going through the actions because you're really just placing a card down. And from my memory, you get to do that action of the symbol that's below it. And then you get to, whether it's placing a uh, different type of language that you're then translating the scripts to, or you're moving around a different area of the board. Um, it's, pretty straightforward with the iconography and it was a blast. I didn't expect to do as well as I did with it, but it's one of those that I will definitely play again because um, trying to figure out resource managements with any Garfield game is always a, in <laughs> one of those concerns and figuring how to do so is I'm sure the review with legacy of you will come up later on when, uh, or a different day when you guys talk about that. But um it's I, I really enjoy it and I can't wait for inventors to come out. So this is one that because I've talked about this before, I came to a point where I just couldn't keep buying every game <laughs> they put out at, at a certain <laughs> point because I wasn't even I was barely getting Raiders of North Sea to the table, yeah. as I know, with all the expansions uh, nearly enough. And that's my favorite. So like it, it, no matter what people have want to play i will always play that one but this one definitely was one i want to get to the table with someone else's copy at some point because i kind of stopped blind buying all of them uh and i've definitely (laughs) fallen into the hadrian's wall legacy of you and more of that format so this one this one has a lot of that uh, i like i said it's got some neat things in it because it's got if i'm not mistaken hand management it's got some area majority mm-hmm. influence so it's got a few different mechanics that i think are interesting and there is some there's is there bag building in this of some kind there's like there's some yeah. sort of they they mixed in a lot of that combination of i um, now let me look look it up here yeah it's scrolling down here yeah we have the little list yeah so deck bag and pool building so yeah i it, they they've definitely changed it up which they do and credit to to this team of 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 sham and company because they really do mix it up with their games i think they come back to that resource management and that worker placement very often or 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 kind of unique i don't know if it's unique anymore but it was unique at one point with the card play Hmm. you mentioned the icon the icons though i will say this about them i think they have done a really good job with that over the years that if you've played any of their other games, quite frankly, you tend to pick up the next one and you get a general idea of what a card does. So if you're familiar, it probably makes it a little bit easier to pick up the game. Yeah. And that was the easy thing when they were going through the teach of the game. I'm like, okay, so this is a provision. This is this, this, like, like, okay, I got the iconography down. I've played it enough that it, like you said, you know it, you're probably going to, you can pick it up pretty quick. Yeah. Um, but I just yeah. wish I could, play. I wish I played more of these. Um, I stopped in the, I think I'm in the, I'm in the Chris boat here where I, I think I, I stopped after uh, Viscounts 
of the bl blind buying them is i think is what you refer to it as yeah and i have not played a single south tigress title even though i feel like i should because they like every game has been a hit that i have played um from from this team from shem from garfield games and i'm looking at this one and i'm like and i'm seeing towers i'm seeing colors i'm seeing cars i'm seeing tokens everywhere and tableaus and this thing and that i'm like i'm like why, why have I not played this one yet? <laughs> is my is it's, my thing, even though it looks pretty cool. It does carry a pretty hefty uh waiting BGG style four out of wow. the five. That, that's pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, and I'm intrigued. You I'm intrigued good game Garfield game games. Though. What else like, where because Paladins was pretty high too, but mm -hmm. I don't know what Paladins was. I'm actually gonna have to check that out. Paladins was, I, I think it's roughly the same, uh, but yeah, slightly lower, in, three point seven. In, yeah, Inventors is going to be the heaviest of all of them. I will say that. Oh, interesting. And so that was, I, I think there are the folks that have been doing like the blind buys of the games, and if you look at the South Tiger series as a whole, Wayfarers to Scholars to um, Inventors, it has progressively gotten more and more heavier. In my world, that's perfect. In <laughs> other people's worlds, it's not exactly what they're looking for or expecting if you look at games like Architects. Obviously, Viscounts and Paladins may be a little heavier than those, but it's not like unbearable for those folks that aren't looking for well, it's a long heavy way games. from raiders which is the 2.56 yeah <laughs> so and i think that's the thing too because whenever i bought a garfield shem phillips design game i was always said because like i'm uh, chris and i are the same person here right now because raiders of the north sea is like one of my favorite games of all time and i'm always expecting a raiders experience and then i don't get the raiders experience i get something <clears throat> a little bit more i get something more complex and I feel always feel disappointed because I wanted that experience, but I got this different experience. And I think that's just that is 100% a me problem because I had expectations that were not met. And plus, because I blind bought it and didn't do my research and was a sucker. It, it, we're just saying we've improved. We, we don't do the blind. The, I, I'm, yeah, I, I, like I said. I, it's one I would like to try. I'm I do more heavy games than I did at that time, but um, I'd like to try this one for sure. I wonder what right. I wonder if uh, the more heavy Garfield games would hit for you more because I know how much you don't like Raiders of the North Sea. But I wonder. Yeah, if I, I don't like Raiders of the North Sea. Yes, and and it has nothing to do with the weight of it. It's the pacing of Raiders of the North Sea I do not like. Um, and mm, Paladins, yeah. Paladins, I did like more than Raiders of the North Sea, for sure. Um, but I think... And then I played Architects of the West Kingdom, which I thought was okay, too. Um, that's, like, in the middle of, of both Raiders and, and Paladins for me. Um, I don't know if, because it's complex, I would enjoy it more. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. sometimes I feel like... I, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll play it. I don't like complexity for the sake of complexity. I like complexity when it's, like everyone's involved and fully engaged and stuff. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I don't know. I haven't, I haven't played it. How, how is the, how's the player interaction in scholars? Uh, it's, it's minimal. I, I think I would maybe compare it a little bit with player interaction, uh, to how, um, Paladins is in a way. Okay. There's still some interaction. You, there's still some areas like when you're, um, like quote unquote translating the scripts you may have to use other players um transcribers i guess is the word, the word i'll use with that you're still looking you may have to use those so there is I, areas where you do have to pay attention to other people um so there's maybe a, a slight bit more interaction than what paladins is but it's not there's yeah. it's still a lot of it is on your board and what you're trying to do mm. so mm. <clears throat> but well, that, well, obviously that was scholars yeah. tyler but yeah we got two more in, on the docket so what's uh number two number two is magna storm uh so it's all one word um i've seen that before yeah 
It yeah. is a game. So when I snagged uh, Marine Worlds uh, through Capstone, I I ordered directly through Capstone, and I this was on like clearance, and it was like twenty bucks. It was a game that I just took a blind shot on, as we referenced, just going blindly into games. Uh, this is one of those that I had gone into. I'm like, hey, it looks cool. It looks a little interesting. And it's, I got it, and it was almost like Dune House Secrets for me. When I, so I backed Dune House Secrets. I opened the box and I never played it because of, the reviews that were on it and the stuff, everything that I heard about it. When I got Magna Storm, I was like, okay, it looks interesting. It, I read the rule book, looks fun, but I saw the reviews and it was like a mixed bag of stuff. And then I, it finally got to the point recently where I'm like, okay, I either need to play it or I just need to sell it. So decided to get it to the table and it's, it's a quick game. And it, the, the actions are very simple. Those yellow um, kind of meeples, like crew members you see on the board there, those are your actions that you're taking. Oh, um, so you're you're moving those crew members around, and below there are two different actions you can take. You can either move your scout runner, which is out on the main board, or you can gain resources, which um, there's different cubes, whether it's your cube. Um, the, the other players, uh, yellow or black, which if you pull it is is your own cube. And you're essentially just moving around in that storm, quote unquote storm that there is. Um, and that's the green area that you're able to move your scout runner within. And it's just a area control, um, area majority control. And you're trying to have the most, they're, they're called turtle laps. I, I call it, <laughs> it, it like space turtles uh, with this. Turtles, yeah. So they, they are turtles um, and you're just trying to place them out there. And it's got a Terra Mystica feel of it where it, when you place a, t a turtle lab out on a certain spot, you get to bump up that research track. And if you bump it up a certain point, there's different rewards um, where you can get uh, certain cubes um, to then pay for crew members or pay for different um, abilities that you may have. So super interesting. I think we finished it in a three-player game in like 90 minutes with Teach. And it was it was pretty straightforward. The rule book, there's some stuff that's missing with it that wasn't the greatest, but I, I enjoyed it. It was fun. It's there's a lot of for being able to do two different act, two different, three different actions. There's a lot that can go into it and a lot of think like a lot of different thinking that you have to do in your turn to set up how you want to take your actions. So it was really fun. And there's I there's one part of the game that I haven't opened and I don't think I'll open ever. And it's uh there's cards that almost make it kind of like a legacy style game. Mm -hmm. So like at the end of the game, if you take first, second or third, you get these certain cards that if you play with the same people over and over, you can get different benefits at the beginning of the next game. So it's, they tried to almost like force that legacy style into the box itself, mm -hmm. but I don't, I'm not opening them because I don't ever see myself playing it that much with my group. Like I'll play it a couple more times with my group, but mm -hmm. to get the same people to play it over and over again, that is, that's just not happening. <laughs> so <laughs> you going to hold on to this one. You think? Yeah, I think so. I, it is one that maybe won't come out as frequently. I think it'll come out as uh, something I'll play like once a year. So near the end of the year, I'll probably break it out again uh, because it's fun. It's a bit of a table hog. I will say that, but yeah, I looked it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not overly, um, overly difficult of a game, even though it still has that Euro type feel, uh, that I, I tend to love. Does it come with the trays? Uh, it does not come with any sort of trays. Oh, okay. So that look that those red ones probably, uh, would be very nice to have with the, the game. Yeah. But, it's not the the setup can be a little much. 
Uh, I, I didn't think it was overly mm -hmm. bad though. Um, once you kind of figured it out. So nice. and like I said, for three players in, in our group and getting, getting it taught and played in like 90 minutes to two hours wasn't wasn't horrible at all no it's not bad at all i was in your boat i had picked this one up on a deep discount shelf once because <laughs> it was well it was just, it was just like there i think you like you said like it was like 15 bucks or something like mm -hmm. that and i'm like and you know outside looks interesting but mine never got played Mine, I never actually ended up playing mine. And I put it in like my local cons auction mm -hmm. the next year and got my actually end up. I think I got my money back, I think, for it. But, <laughs> but, uh, I, again, it looked interesting, but then it just, like I said, just never got played. And I was like, I don't think I'm actually you, you, you took it the next step further. You actually got it played. <laughs> I didn't even, I didn't even do that. So you're a much better person than me. Part, part of it was is my neighbors let I kept on saying like yeah I have I've had this game on my shelf of opportunity for like eight months I don't and everyone in my group is like that's not on your shelf of opportunity I've had games on there for years that I've never uh, played and I'm like <laughs> well that, yeah that's that's the difference in my collection where I, I've I've only started to build it for like the last year and a half two years mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. where they've been in the hobby for like 10 years and they're like yeah I've had games since then since I haven't played I'm like well, I'll, I'm sure I'll get to that point at some, at some time. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> I don't know what that's like. <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of so many games on your shelves right now. Oh, man, there's so many. Uh, well, we, we, we've joked around here that we need to have a local con and call it Shelf of Shame Con, where everybody <laughs> just brings like one or two games that you don't know and like that that that's the con that's the weekend you we gotta we gotta get these played we gotta learn how to play these games you put a list up somebody come and teach me how to play this game i really need to get it played or something like that that's so not a joke that needs to be a thing that, <laughs> that, that that a <laughs> yeah that. then you can even like uh, elaborate with other, other people like what's on their shelf and then like majority like that's mm. the game you focus on Oh man! Yeah, no shame one con. leaves the con. No one leaves the con until everybody's shelf shame of shame con. con. <laughs> shame. Everybody's game gets played. Oh man, so that, good. Yeah. that 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 is a yeah. I like that idea a lot. I I dig it. I I'm I'm laughing, Tyler, because I picked up a copy of. Uh, I'm looking to see what the freaking official name of it is. Um, whatever. It's the uh, the Sleepy Hollow Headless Horseman legacy mm. game mm. because it was i ended up getting it for like so dirt cheap and then i immediately had to go on and split the cost i think it was a squirrel um well, i don't know if squirrels in our <laughs> chat today but split the cost on the errata that they made for it because there was issues with it that didn't come with the version i bought so mm. they, they <laughs> which were minor mind you but needless to say uh it's like that is two, and and I I think yeah. the Discord might know what you're about to talk about, but we still gotta it, it, ask and say it. And uh, I think uh, Mr. Al knows knows it quite well as well. And Ashes were born. I, it's I I don't. I, there's so much with this game. I I'm one deck short of having the whole collection at this point now. Oh my gosh. Um, I've. And, and I say that because the Blight of Never set I had to pre-order and it's not coming for a couple of weeks, but I'm counting that as in my collection right now. Um, but there is so much with this game. I've played, I think, I, so I have 16 plays with of almost like 13 different decks played. And it is so fun. There's And there's new stuff that I'm learning with it every single day. Uh, that I, I get it played because each deck is so unique and really you don't need to dive into the draft, uh, the, like the drafting of the decks, uh, right away because, and Ryan, Mr. Oz mentioned this on his streams as well. Like you, the pre-con decks are so good in, mm -hmm. in the different abilities that they have the difference um if you get to the uh expansions uh 
you get these different maybe special power cards for the or unique cards for the different phoenix born and so i've started to get some of my favorites but i think my goal by the end of the year is to play each deck like five times and mm -hmm. it's I, i'm on my way but i still have like 10 different decks that i haven't even touched yet in my collection and you're doing yeah. it lar largely with the solo mode too right I'm right now I'm only doing it with the solo mood and okay. with the corpse of virus, it gives you that, uh, capability to play it solo. And yep. <laughs> with the frost wild scorch there, that is that blight and never said in the other hands. Yep. So there's, I've only played frost wild scourge, which is a different chimera, um, boss that you can face off against. I played that once. It was one of those things where it was, I was a little more hesitant to, to test, try that one because it brought in a new aspect with like conjuration spells that the, um, that the chimera aspects have as a whole. So it's, I don't know, there's so much with this game that I, I could go on and I, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to play it another two times this week. My goal right now is to play it three times a week right now. And obviously it's going to be more than the one by 100 I have, but I just it's pretty easy to do. It's pretty yeah. Easy to do. I'm trying to find out if one of our local guys has ashes reborn. Yeah. So, uh, as we're, yeah, ashes reborn and I've been very blessed and lucky. I may have been managing to work with flat hat games. They have been ever so kindly, um, sending me the red rains stuff to cover and provide content because there's no, there's like next to nobody like making active content for ashes reborn. And they, they want, and I want to get that word out because this game is awesome. And if more people are playing it, that means the more support it's going to get, they have already announced the next chimera set after blade of never set called the siege of Lord's wall, mm -hmm. which is going to be, amazing because one of the cool things of ashes when you're playing the player versus player mode is the ability to um attack with all of your units at the same time yeah. being um from what we've seen with the chimera so far they only attack with one person at a time now we're going to get a enemy that is going to be swinging with multiple opponents at the same time is what they're going to be introducing into that one. And I have been waiting for that because that's one of the strategic aspects of when do I hit with all of my guys? When do I just only hit with one person at a time? Uh, it was one of those very neat strategic aspects that we're going to get that with the next, with the next expansion. And I believe there's after that one, there's still going to be three more expansions that they have. Yeah. Cause there's, there's going to be, be one for every magic one for every, the magic types. Yeah, and it's nice too because like, I think I don't think I'm going to introduce this to anyone else in the game group as a all right, let's face off against each other because I don't know if that would be fair for me to go up against them. And by the time I play them, it would be something like I've probably played it 40 times, and it's not going to be a fair battle. Going is that a humble it. brag? No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> but uh, the You're the nice the thing. Curve. Yeah, there is. Uh, with the Corpse of Viros and like the going, you can do a co op against the Chimera. So that's probably how I would introduce it to others within my group is doing that one to the, the two player battle against the aspects. Cause it's very simple to just go from one to two players in that mm -hmm. co op mode. You just flip over the, the Chimera card. And you just put more aspects out there on the board to battle against. And it's very simple to go through. And it's in that co-op manner where you're going to get, you're working together. It's just a matter of just figuring out what and, and how to do so. And then there's the mode that no one talks about. There's the co-op mode where you're working <laughs> against the, co the, the, the chimera. But then there's like this, highlander mode where there can only be one at the end where it's like after the chimera is defeated really your current life your, your current stages of each you now 
pit each other you pit each other against each other in a nope there can only be one true ruler of this land <laughs> battle and one person may be more beat up than the other person and <laughs> I, I thought that was a really wild addition that they made as a choice. I don't, I have not seen one bit of person talk about that is because I don't think it's very necessary. <laughs> it doesn't sound it. Yeah. That's like <laughs> when like you a... play legendary, the, 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 the deck, the deck building game, it's a co-op, but then there's like a point system at the end. Like, just, yeah. just skip the point system, you know, skip the point system. I do uh... have to ask, um, so if you had to, so both of you have been mm -hmm. really into Ashes Reborn. If you were just diving in for the first time and mm -hmm. want to do solo, what's the bare minimum to get the full experience? You want to get the master set. Mm -hmm. So that gives you all your tokens, all of your dice. That gives you the six, it gives you six pre-con decks. That's to, this guy, right? That's mm -hmm. this one. Yep. Gives you the six pre-con decks, all the dice, all the tokens, and everything like that. And then you'll want to add on the Corpse of Viros expansion okay. set. That's what introduces the uh, solo uh, co-op versus and, the Chimera mode. And, and do you need anything else? That's, that's the bare that's the bare yeah. minimum that you would want to get in on this. Send solo. Ryan down a path. I just I'm, I'm there right now. <laughs> well, well we, we've crap. created we've created the Ashes channel in the Discord channel, which everybody it's... should be joining at this point. <laughs> Correct. Um, but we have Including the Ashes channel now. Representative from Plat Hat Games, games at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, and because uh, like Brian Chandler's in the chat here, he says my Ashes Reborn life just started today. The boxes have arrived, also as a review copy. Because I to I told uh, Brian. Yeah. I said you should go down that route. Say it's for the channel. Just say if for your for your content. Do you want colorblind? Do you want accessibility feedback for your game? And looks and look at what they did. Nikki over at Plat Hat Games is amazing. We thank her very very much for her support of small content creators. Um, yeah, reach out. It's going to be great. I bet you if you guys even just reached out, Nikki, I can give you her information afterwards. Send you a review copy. Yeah, and Plat Hat has a pretty decent bundle between the Corpse of Viros and the Master Set too. Like it's decently priced in comparison too. So cool. it's, it, it it gets dangerous after that, as I know. But it's that's a, that's a different story uh, with diving into it. So I I let Ryan dive into the dangerous stuff at this point because <laughs> Marvel Champions, which we both still. I literally just put in the order for us on Marvel Champions recently. Um, <laughs> the, the, the Age of Apocalypse is, up, is, is coming. <laughs> yeah, you're not even <laughs> Arkham Horror level, man. You know? I, so. I know, but Mr. Rattles, all the same. But... Tyler, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, uh, I have, this, I have this idea for content. It's I don't do collectible card games. I collect card games. <laughs> <laughs> accurate statement. It's an accurate statement. <laughs> Whole whole reason I won't go into multiple things. Uh, Tyra, thank you as always for yeah. calling in, showing us some new games uh, that maybe we hadn't heard of. Uh, if you want to be awesome like Tyler, you can call dashboard.com. I know I do see Marcel in the chat, and maybe he can give us an update from a con he was at too. If he wants to call in at some point, no peer pressure, just saying. Um, but Tyler, thanks for thanks yeah. for joining us today. Yeah, thank you guys. We'll see you. Nice. Oh wow, that was that was smooth. See, look at this, look at this, guys. It's Marcel. Oh my gosh! Oh wow, that was quick. Yeah, <laughs> that was quick. Watcher of hockey. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was bad hockey. Oh, uh, <laughs> oh darn. Well, look. Yeah, I guess we can't win them all. <laughs> no, you, you you can't win them all. But uh, we win tonight because we get. I know I had chatted with you about this. Um, but you had a chance to go up to Granite Summit, and I'm dying to hear about what your experience was like. I know you played a bunch of games up there uh, yep. as well. Plus, uh, you were uh, hanging out with some of the community, too. So uh, I'd love to hear that update and, and some of the games that you played up there at Granite Summit. Yeah, so Granite Summit uh, met up with uh, Eric. I'm not sure if he's actually in the 
chat tonight, but uh, it was nice meeting up with him. And then my sister, uh, Mitchell Memories in there, uh, she joined me for Friday, or no, yeah, Friday afternoon and then Saturday and Sunday. Uh, so, so far all the, oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Well, I had to wear this one. <laughs> yeah, sure. It's the official branded hat. <laughs> yeah. It's it's absolutely the first official appearance on the channel since uh since you you made that hat, if I'm not mistaken. Bring it in for Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, guys? <laughs> I'm just saying. Wait, get the merch store going. Yeah. yeah. So it's made a couple of special appearances between the con, brought it down to Boston, was in the uh, St. Patrick's Day Parade in Manchester, New Hampshire. So it's, it's been around. But yeah. Uh, yeah, back to the con. Uh, so yeah, I got to play a bunch of games. Uh, I went in there. I was like, I brought a bag full of stuff. I got there. I saw all the games that I don't own and want to play. And I'm like, well, I'm not playing anything I own because I can do that later. And yeah, so first day is kind of like deer in the headlights i'm like okay so many games a lot of people all right who wants to teach me something and i actually stumbled into probably one of my favorite games of the con dinosaur world mm. so it was a nice guy taught it to me he had the kickstarter edition um pretty much immediately bought that later that week and yeah so basically this is jurassic park the board game as I've heard, as I've heard. And this one, I this one is a very much streamlined version of Dinosaur Island, really, from what I know. And I loved Dinosaur Island, but it was a beast to set up Dinosaur Island. Like, literally, I, it took you like 30, 40 minutes to set up Dinosaur Island. It felt like the first time. And it, it got better, I know. But um, this kind of streamlined that process and uh, visually still had the the look and feel, though I don't know if it has. Does, does it have all the awesome dinosaur meeples, too, that I know Dinosaur Island had? So the original box did come with meeples. They didn't have um, the images like uh, put on them. Mm -hmm. uh, if you got the Kickstarter edition, like I bought off, uh, I think it was Game Nerds, then you've got all the ones with like, the images on them. Like you can kind of see, it looks like this is the Kickstarter edition. You get the little red guy down over uh, on the right, right side. Here. Yeah. So they got all the stenciled stuff or the stickers on them. Uh, very nice. I saw and some pictures of it somewhere else, too. You got the metal uh, coins. They're part right of the here. Kickstarter edition, which is nice. Yep, those are the guys. And then you got the Jeep meeples, which are fun. Oh, Jeeples. Jeepers. Yeah, so actually the Kickstarter edition has, um, those are all the same image. Each color actually has its own Jeep in the Kickstarter edition. Oh, cool. Wow. So it, I thought it was kind of a really fun game. We played it with just the two of us because we didn't really want to wait along too much. Um, it was kind of a fun set because you go through, you pick a card that tells you how many meeples you got and each color meeple does special things. Uh, it can be used in certain locations. Uh, I don't see. Yeah, you got that little card up above the the board Over there. Here. Yep, and that's telling you what color meeples you get for that. So the first player gets to choose the first card, um, and then go down through it. And then you'll go through in the first stage is you do the private action. So you can put anything that is on the board that you see with all the hexagons on it. So you can go buy like dinosaur pens. You can buy research centers. You can buy security, depending on what you need. Um, and then you go to the next part, which is the private phase and which you can then put. Um, so that is the, uh, the one next to the hexagons right down below. Okay. So on that one there, you can. OK, so that's where you get all your resources on. They got little blocks that tell you where you are on your resource tracker. Uh, to the right of that is the actual private one. And on that board there, you've got a bunch of things you can do there. So you can additionally hire more security there. You can get more Jeeps mm. um, and as you go. And then you go to the tour phase where you get to move your Jeep around. On the tracker board, you've got the purple there and that'll tell you how many stops your Jeep can make. Okay. So, and then you gotta make sure, cause one of the things that kind of killed me was uh, I always overplayed my meeples in the beginning and then I didn't have anything left for when I was doing my uh, tour. So I was like, oh, dang, I can't build a Velociraptor pen right now. Mm. That makes me sad. Don't you hate when that happens? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And you so, haven't done Dinosaur Island. I did uh, not. Right? Okay. Yeah, I, I've, I've heard comparisons, and yeah, I've heard it's this is stream much more streamlined. I it it this one looks like it takes up less space too. Even though it looks like it takes up plenty of space, it looks like it less takes up less space. Um, and there's some I chat in the I comments. think those hexagons are still quite chunky, if I remember. Yeah, they're not too yeah. bad. Um, no. Let's see if I can get one. <laughs> I actually grabbed the game. <laughs> there you go. So, and Harris, you say you have Dinosaur Island still? Oh, no, I used to. I had sold that a while ago. It, oh, okay. I, it did not get played nearly enough. It was not. And yeah, it was it was awesome. An awesome production, I should say. Uh, and yeah. I liked the gameplay, but not enough to set it. It sounds so funny to say, but um, but yeah, I, I, I guess it, it was one of those ones that was not going to get played enough. And I didn't want to teach it every time anymore. So I yeah. kind of moved on. Yeah. And one thing that the guy that taught me the game, because um, it was his copy, it come with these little, if you zoom into one of the uh, tour hexagons right there, uh, like that right, bottom right one. Here? Yep. Like so, yeah, like that one's fine. Uh, so right there, you get that little number symbol. And every time you stop on your tour there, um, your tour group gains less excitement. Uh, excitement's a way to kind of gain money and stuff like that. And they come with these little cheap cardboard, like one, two, three, four, five. Uh, what the guy told me, he was like, yeah, I just bought a bunch of cheap uh, dice, D6, basically yeah. off Amazon, and use those instead. So you're not dealing with little tiny cardboard pieces. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Those chips are extremely tiny and fiddly. I didn't even bother popping them out. I just threw them away. <laughs> yeah. I will note in the comments, people, uh, we had one comment about uh, Dinosaur Island feeling streamlined. Oh, where was uh, it? This one. Uh, yeah. Uh, but I never did not heard as good about this one, uh, which again, I think if you really like Dinosaur Island, you like a lot, uh, which and you're there's people who love that game. And I could imagine them never wanting to go to anything even less than what it was in terms of gameplay. Um, also, by the way, uh, yeah, you mentioned it in there, Mr. Ow, Tiny Epic Dinosaurs is a fantastic little game. Uh, it, it really is. I love Tiny Epic Dinosaurs. It's one of the Tiny Epic games that I kept because I used to own like five or six of the Tiny Epic titles, mm -hmm. and now I own three of them. I got rid of a bunch of them, and the three I kept, that was one of them for a reason. And yeah, I think there was some chat. Too. Yeah, there's some chat about like different dinosaur-themed games out there. Dinogenics, if you ever have a chance to play that one, that one's actually a really cool uh, take on the dinosaur park building uh, experience as well quite a bit different than this one yeah is that that's just about making the dinosaurs if it's dinogenics i'm guessing there's yeah there's the making of the dinosaurs but there's also like way more of the dinosaurs going on rampages and breaking your park and oh, eating yeah. people and <laughs> there's a little bit of that in here you get the yeah. the threat detector and if you don't have enough security they tend to eat your guests yeah i remember i just remember dinogenics that was a much bigger focus of the game of the dinosaurs running rampant way more often in that game. Yeah. I yeah. love that. You just got to have the least amount of people eaten and you don't lose out on points in the end. Yep. Yeah. I've only done dinosaur Island. Um, I would try dinosaur world. I did not like my play of dinosaur Island. Um, uh, I would we'll like... bring it when we go uh, later in August. That's true. Oh, you know, when I played dinosaur world, I immediately sold my dinosaur Island. Yeah. Yeah, so that was uh, the first game that I that was actually the first game I played at the con. And that was just Friday, me kind of meandering around trying to figure out what it was and what I wanted to do. Um, so one of the things that I did really like about the con, well, two things, I guess, is one, the library was just massive. Mm -hmm. So they have like the actual con library. You go into the room and they've got, I think it was eight humongous shelves of just games A through Z. And at frame, there was a ton of games in there. We got to play a handful of them, actually. And we kind of just focused in on alphabet challenge ones that are tough to get. So like an X. Hmm. Uh, so that was fun one. It was Xenon Profiteer, which was a nice, quick, easy, fun game to play. Uh, and then the other thing, too, is in the main gaming room, you had 
tables around the edge of it and people would bring in games that they were willing to let you borrow. Yeah. And you know, some people had like one person had apiary out there and that was awesome. Got to play that one on Sunday. I think it was. So I definitely want to play that one again, but it was when I went years ago, that's how it was. Like it was just the side tables. There was no, or, or at least the giant library that you speak, they, that you're talking about wasn't a thing when I went. Oh that yeah. It's been like 2017 maybe. I mean, there was something like probably 800 games in that and then yeah. the shelves. And then in the main room, you probably had like another probably 500 at least going around the box. So, and then mm-hmm. one thing that I did enjoy, they had play to win. So they had these shelves and there was probably 20 games, I think. And what you had to do was you go grab the game off the shelf, go play it, come back, log that you played it and you're entered in a chance for a raffle to win that game. Um, and that's actually how we ended up playing Robot Quest Arena. Mm-hmm. Bring so, that up. Another game that I bought pretty much immediately. <laughs> <laughs> it's on Kickstarter now too, right? Or Game Found. Game Found, yeah. yeah. Game Found. Yep, for the uh, expansion. So they got, I think, six new robots and a larger map for a higher player count. Yeah, this one I'm looking. We we played this one briefly at PAX Unplugged, but we have a review copy in that we're gonna be playing at some point. Yeah, the review copy will hit the table for a playthrough very soon, um, and I'm excited because we did really enjoy this one at PAX Unplugged. It, it was it was just a I don't know what it was. Well, I mean, yes, I think the first thing you see when you look at the game is you say, "Oh, battle bots," right? But I mean, it's it's a very well designed game. It doesn't just look, in my opinion, doesn't just look cute. I thought my initial impression at least was that um, this is this is, could hit the table many, many times over. So we'll see how I feel after I play it again. Um, but yeah, it's by the way, good note in the comments, the collector factor, <laughs> because you could really just keep putting out robots on this one. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. And the price is enormous. I think for for getting everything right, it's like three hundred something bucks. For everything, yeah, I yeah, think it's, it's three hundred for the all in, which would get yeah. you everything that's been out for this plus the new stuff. Yeah, to get so. you the base, the storage box, all the expansions. I think it's like yeah. ten robots with space in the box for more down the road. Yeah. And the MSRP uh, on the the main game is like seventy nine ninety nine with the four robots uh, that the base robots to give yeah. just the general idea. And you can pick them up um, if they're in stock. I've seen them for as low as like 17 bucks for uh, the black and the yellow bot. And on Amazon, I think you can get them for like 25 bucks. There's there's one named Jaws, just so you know, Espen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. (laughs) There's one named Jaws. That's all I'm saying. Is it a shark or is it like the James Bond villain? No. Or is it the underappreciated Burger King kid? No. There you go. Got Jaws right there. Yeah, I think it's meant to be like a trash can type thing. Oh, it's neither. Okay. <laughs> it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this I mean, one, so we were able to get this on the table with uh, this past weekend, my 10-year-old son and my 12-year-old daughter, who immediately decided to team up on trying to take me down. And I just remember the sheer shock in my son's face when my daughter turned on him once I was dead and she took him down. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm, oh, exci- I'm excited to play this one again, though. This was a very hot game at Dice Tower West. Uh, they had their hot games room yeah. there, and this one constantly had a lineup. So there was people waiting for people to finish games so that they would hop into their seats as soon as they were done their game. Then they were already there was always a line. I never got the chance to play it. Um, at Dice Tower West, but there was I can tell you it was hot there. There, there was always people lined up to play it there there were something and i thought that speaks volumes of the whatever type of game it ends up being uh i just thought that that was amazing yeah yeah no yeah, it was cool it's very much like uh you know it's a deck builder that you kind of get like 64 golden eye perfect dark vibes when you're playing you know <laughs> like trying to beat the snot out of everyone but it's a deck builder in that regard. And that's why I like it. 
to be honest. Like it, it brings me back to that feeling of playing GoldenEye 64 or Perfect Dark, but in a tabletop setting. So. You're saying all the right things right now. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> With, I don't know if there's a big head mode. But, uh, well, I mean, those are pretty chunky robots. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Is there an you'll odd be job? Able to, you'll oh, be able to find out very soon because we're going to play it. Uh, we are going to have a live playthrough and uh, everyone will be able to see it. It'll, uh, it'll, it, the gameplay is a lot of fun, in my opinion. So, and the one I, thing I will say about this one before uh, and robot quest talk i noticed a lot of deck builders their strengths are always two player right always two player robot quest arena i feel like shines at four mm -hmm. um you want max player count for this guy max chaos yeah i'm yeah, looking forward to seeing the uh ability yeah it's i'm looking the, forward to seeing the larger map too yeah mm. now i'm imagining like golden eye maps <laughs> with this <laughs> no oh, it's man. I, I do agree, Ryan. The the unpredictability of all right, I'm gonna go this way. Oh no, I'm gonna go for you instead. Yeah, uh, that that's what that that's what that larger play count does for this game. Whereas if there's sure, one dude. other person, you know what's happening. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I'm glad. You, and can I ask you before you before we lose you, Marcel? I got to ask you. You also finally got a game to the table that I'm dying to hear. But your impression was of. But I believe you actually had a chance to play Trick Shot finally. Yeah, and I played it correctly. That's that cool. <laughs> That's, a good start. That's always a good thing, too. Yeah, I played a game uh, with Eric, actually. Uh, great time. We actually, he, we played the full three-period version of it. He managed to get it tied up, like, late in the third period. And then we just rolled dice to see who would win via shootout. And he won, sadly. <laughs> but, yeah, this game is fun. I had... Cause I got the, the neoprene mat and everything. A lot of people kind of stopped and looked at it. Cause it's just got that presence. Yeah. Hey, you're chucking dice. And every time you make a move, you add another die and there's more mm -hmm. chance for failure. Uh, so you really start to push your luck and, you know, earlier in the period, you kind of exhaust all your rerolls and then you got to try and figure out strategically, when can I do a line change to get a refresh stuff like that. So it, definitely a fun game. I love to play it some more. Yeah, I love that mechanic of push your luck where you add an additional die and trick shot. And I also love like the callback to the NES ice hockey game. <laughs> where, you know, you get the skinny guy, medium guy, and big guy, and then yep. they all different stats. Yeah. Yep. I need to play this one again. And yep. I got yep. fighting. Edition, I only played the first edition. Well, this is another one that I feel just like looks, it just looks so great, but I'm excited to actually get the gameplay in and I love the push your luck mechanic in it. So I will be, yeah, actually. And, and that's a great point. Uh, the teams, yep. uh, I, this is what intrigued me about it, uh, was that teams factor. And there's so many different teams, which might change the way you choose to play or at least start your game. I know. So you played, I'm assuming, do, do you know so what team you started We with? actually played teamless. Um, oh, you played teamless. Okay. So we drew the teams just so we figured out what players we had because uh, each team gives you a preset list of players and their capabilities. Um, but each team has a home arena, which then has a park you can apply. Mm. So for the most part, we just um, we forgot about our parks on some of the players and then didn't sometimes. So we tried to keep up with that. But first time play through, we did mostly just the actions and stuff like that. Got it. Yeah. Uh, awesome. You got to play it. Um, thank you for, for buzzing in and giving us mm -hmm. the, the feedback too on the event. Cause it was one I would have loved to been to, but uh, celebrating uh, incredibly important uh, things such as my wife's birthday. Um, but eventually I will get up there. Uh, and it sounds like it was great. And for those who are listening in, uh, I got to say one of the neatest things to me was the fact that, just a bunch of members of our Discord community kind of all hanging out uh, together. Um, obviously, you and your sister meeting up with Eric to me was was neat to see. So definitely yeah. uh, appreciate uh, seeing that. And uh, yeah, hopefully I get up there because I know it's close to your neck of the woods. Yeah, about a 30-minute drive. Not too bad. Oh, <laughs> not, not when it's her 40th birthday. That's true. It's a milestone birthday. Yeah, it's a milestone birthday. <laughs> I, it's the like milestone birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. 
Well, thank you, Marcel. Um, not a problem. And uh, I, I'm sure we'll see you back here soon. Um, and then, like I said, uh, for everyone who's watching this, my friendly reminder, you can be like Marcel as well. And you can call dashboard.com, be part of the show. So have a good one, guys. See you later. Take care. So, guys, I wanted to mention one thing because there's one game I did play. It got mentioned in Discord recently, so I wanted to bring it up briefly. Uh, definitely plan a future review of this because uh, you need to play it, uh, Mr. Espen. Uh, but I had a chance to play this game with Anthony, and that is Let's Go to Japan. And oh. I wanted to talk about this one because it came up on the Discord. Wait, 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 wait. What was the name of the game? Let's Go. No, let's it's go. let's go to Sorry, Japan. Oh, the exclamation mark is there. It's uh, in the middle, Japan. though. It's not let's go to Japan. I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, the I hearts. Hearts. Love, love. Hearts, hearts. Let's do it. Let's try it. There we go. <sighs> you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marcel said to do the hearts. So I just did the hearts. Um, so let's go to Japan. Um, the reason I bring this up, one, uh, so for those of you who are watching or not on our discord we do have a great discord uh really would encourage you to go check it out join us come say hello a lot of great conversations happening there one of those conversations was about uh and i believe arwin was talking about it was the coloring for some of the pieces uh when you're kind of initially setting up the game but interestingly enough the colors being a little too close uh mm -hmm. It was no big deal once you actually play the game because you put them in a little baggie and you're never really thinking about it. So it doesn't have a major impact. The rest of the stuff is all it was all good for me. I don't want to speak to uh I don't want to speak to things in the way that Brian Chandler or other members of our channel might that you know can speak to greater accessibility challenges. Uh, but all of that said, for the most part, I didn't have too much trouble. Uh, I do think some of the coloring, though, like I said. A little too close. They could have picked some different colors. Take that out of it. The gameplay of this one, I got to say, you are planning in this game a trip to Japan. That is the game. So you're building your itinerary out. Now, what you have to think about, uh, if you go to any of the shots, I kind of have the full board with some cards laid out. It's probably so I'm trying to find perfect. this one's good. Yeah, that would be good. That'd be perfect. Mm -hmm. So. You're laying out this itinerary. Now, you have to keep in mind, you're trying to accomplish certain situations where that are going to get you some bonus capabilities or, or, or that'll make your life a little bit easier for your trip, uh, such as if you look, for example, on Saturday, see how that there's that symbol at the top? Well, if I have two of that symbol, there's a certain extra bonus I'm going to get once I complete my third card, mm -hmm. which is going to make my game a little bit better for me and, and give me some capabilities. And there's three different things that can happen there um, because you can have one, you could have zero too, but zero, but you could have one, two or three or more. And you get even stronger kind of bonuses upon completing a row of three because every day is free cards. The other thing is you're building these itineraries and ideally you want to try and not travel to and from the two different locations too much because you're going to lose uh, you're potentially, unless you have acquired some luxury travel tokens, you're going to lose victory points every time you do that. The other neat thing is at the bottom, that third card down is going to be your highlight of the day card. Mm. But when you play cards down, so say I have one card down and I play another card on a particular day, I can choose to put it behind or in front of the card that's already down. So you have, you, you have complete ability to manipulate that in the planning process until you lay that third card down. Once that third card is down and you slot it wherever you're slotting it, whatever's that third one is now your highlight. Hmm. So uh, that highlight's going to score you or, or do something for you. The thing that's really important here with this one is also you're going to have because you're plotting it out, there's going to be things that maybe are really powerful, get you good victory points, but they add stress. And so there's a stress tracker. And when the stress tracker hits the bottom, it's the end of the stress tracker row. You then move a token and you're going to have negative points and stress. 
uh, mm. showing. If that was to happen twice in the game, suddenly that's more points lost. So you've got to be mindful of how you're going to build it. What I love about this uh, that stood out, and I'll talk more in a full review, but I'll just say is the fact that it all happens at the end of the game. And you can see that, by the way, up at the top. Um, see that uh, that uh, where the pink little token and the green green token oh, are? This, this is the stress, yeah. I see. Yeah, that's the stress. Got so, it. So the thing I would point out, there's two things I, about the gameplay that are very important for people to know. One, every round, it's very interactive in the sense of you are at the start of each round drawing X amount of cards in the beginning, and then you're keeping some, and then you're giving some to the other player. Here's the difference. I'm taking a card, and I'm putting it face down in that right-hand spot on that other player's board. So they don't know what they're going to get, and there's going to be a time where it's going to say, draw four cards. And they're going to draw the four cards, and pick two, pass two. So you might get some of those cards back. So you're thinking about what you might want to give them in the sense of, is it going to help them hurt them? Also, would I get back something I want? So a lot of different thoughts there. And then at the end, just so everyone knows, this game is a game that is one where it's all scored at the end. It's all just, mm -hmm. just do it all. So you're really thinking it through, but it's one that, I learned and taught in 15 minutes and then we played in about 45. So very easy to pick up. I cannot imagine this is high on the, the difficulty scale on BGG. It's a 2.31. Um, it felt lighter actually, but with strategy. So like it, it really felt like a very deeply strategic game uh, in, in the way that it was kind of playing out, but it definitely was, a delight and um i'm looking forward to playing this again and kind of finalizing my thoughts on this one and can't wait to show it to to you yeah uh, ryan I but i really like this one it was a lot of fun and it's designed by josh wood right the guy who did santa monica correct okay. josh wood santa monica so and it, this was uh this was an aeg game uh which generally speaking i tend to like did you play uh, there, there are exceptions but you play someone with anthony as well yeah, I played this with Anthony. We actually learned it together. Oh, I, had, cool. I, like I said, learned it in about 15 minutes and we played it. So, nice. yeah, yeah, I got to play this at Dice Tower West too. The uh, AAG was one of the major sponsors, so they had their own room. Uh, got to, uh, I was taught this game by a fairly popular Twitch streamer that I follow quite a uh, man, Amanda Panda. Yeah. Is what they, they, uh, she was doing all the demos in the room got to hop in on a game uh i was sold on this with after like my first few turns i was like this was clever i really liked the drafting uh the drafting mechanism in this game of that hey draw to the two cards the kyoto and the tokyo card uh pick one and then pass one i really uh, there is some strategy there because you can see like hey chris has been playing lots of tokyo cards i think we're going to pass him some kyoto cards this time yep. around just to make him really try to think about and maybe have to oh you maybe he has to spend them some train tokens or travel tokens or something like, uh, that. like that uh yeah. it yeah. was yeah it was a lot more interesting than i ever thought that it was going to be uh yeah, like I said, I was sold on it, and I was disappointed that they didn't that AEG didn't bring any copies to sell at the con, or else I would have bought. I probably would have bought a copy right away. But I hear that it's coming. Uh, retail release is going to be right around the right around the corner here. It is also by requirement for everybody. Yeah, uh, I was waiting for this. <laughs> by requirement, if they're in a box, so I had to just box. Out where I put the box. Um. We talked about it. The bowls. The bowls. Hang on. The bowls. The bowls. The bowls. <laughs> These are the bowls. There you go. They said they're very oh, nice. The the barrows. They're uh, they finally <laughs> arrived, and uh, yeah, they were they're, they're really nice. I will definitely use them in a variety of games, but um, dishwasher yeah. safe. Say that again. Is a dishwasher safe? The bowls. I, I didn't check that. They're ceramic bowls, so I assume I don't want to, but I don't. Never know. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that was the 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 Kickstarter bowls that came with them as well. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, I definitely need to play it again. At uh, I, I'd like to play it at a three player count uh, or a four player count. So 
that's my that's my next play because I I'm really interested in the passing of the cards and how that plays because if you play one and two people you're gonna switch direction at one point which is neat mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah All yeah right. it was really good it's a really good game I really enjoyed it I got one I got one All right this one I just played yesterday multiple times and i'm excited to play it because it's a travel version i guess of uh one of my favorite if not favorite game this is gloomhaven buttons and bugs which this honey is- i shrunk the board game it was that's <laughs> i mean look there's spoilers i guess you're shrunk in this one that's what that's the whole premise you you are shrunk in <laughs> And uh, yeah, epic gloom haven. dive you in. Look at that tiny epic gloom haven. I like it. This is it. This is it. That's the board. The board is a card, and you're trying to fight different baddies. And it's your miniature. Look how small this miniature is. Oh, they wow. Actually took, they actually took to heart the name miniature. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they took everything to heart buttons and bugs. And you're like, you'll, you'll be fighting like roaches, I think, at some point. Um, <laughs> But they did a really fantastic job. So, by the way, Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs came about last year during the Gloomhaven 2nd Edition crowdfunding campaign. I think towards the end of the campaign, they're like, oh, if you want to add an additional bonus, Mm -hmm. here's Gloomhaven Buttons and Bugs. So... It's... uh, Yeah, just smash up the goop. Well, what's great is... This really does feel like Gloomhaven to some degree. Like, very much same gameplay. You have the cards that you're going to be playing. Um, and you get to choose the top action and the bottom action. Um, it's a solo-only endeavor. And it's more of a puzzle than anything. I mean, Gloomhaven is also kind of like a spatial puzzle, too. If you really break it down and try to figure out how your character is going to work around this, this field in a short amount of time. Um, they like, so this is designed by Joe Cliff, Phil and Nikki Valance. Um, and they both together did a fantastic job with this so far. Like I'm really, I wasn't expecting too much. And I think that's the best part about it. Is this one, once you've done it, you would do it again. Or once you've done it, you've solved it. Like- no, because there's different characters you could play as. Okay. And like what I'm movie understanding movie. is like this scenario I'm playing right now, if I'm a specific character, I go one way, but if I'm not that specific character, I go the other way. Mm. So, and there's like six yeah. different characters you could play as. So you run through the whole campaign, I guess, quote unquote, um, and can kind of figure it out. Interesting. But yeah, I, I mean, you know, a lot of the Gloomhaven strengths, I feel like comes down to the scenario design the character design um you know like i'm not really into the story of gloomhaven but us uh, so much it on a mechanical level and so much of how these how like the level design was in there where every single scenario comes down to the wire that is still translating so far in gloomhaven buttons and bugs to some degree, the first one is very much a pushover kind of tutorial scenario. But mm-hmm. yeah, wow! Oh, wait, Rachel saying uh, that I've been playing a lot of Oxano on BGA, which I've been playing actually as well. I think with Marcel, go to a kind of Melbourne over the Easter weekend called Oz Bunny Con. Mm-hmm. I like the name. I like the name too, quite a bit. <laughs> oh I man! See over here, my current games are Tainted Grail, King King of Ruins. Primal and Super Echo Red. So I've gotten my own copy of Path of Civilizations and can't wait to play. By the way, I think I will say this. Um, over on our Discord, okay. I do a I question of the week. From- Siri um, thought I was talking to <laughs> I do a question of a week. Uh, and I'm thinking based on tonight, I may need to do favorite dinosaur game uh, for question of the week next week just because of all the dinosaur games. Everyone was so excited to talk about dinosaurs today. Uh so they're awesome uh, they're awesome they are great they are great before we do uh, oh, jump into guy. the review side of things though uh mr route we both ryan and i both got to talk about 
two games. So we got to throw one, throw oh you gosh. a shot at another one. Oh my gosh. What do I do with this time? This very important time that has been given to me. Um, there is so much that I got to love and do and see at Dice Tower West, but I think I'm going to give a shout out to everybody on my streams and on my channels may now know that I'm wearing a certain hat in my things as kind of like a, a, a it's a subtle um, advertising ploy for some gents that I have a handshake deal with out there. And as the lovely gentlemen, uh, Liam and John from Jack Labrador games. Um, so there is a nice, fun, silly little card game called Jack Labrador that mm. I got suckered into. They, the, the, the used car salesman in them is through the roof. Um, I was just kind of wandering the convention floor for a little while at Dice Tower West. And all of a sudden, this guy just pops out from behind his booth. I have no idea who he is. And he's just like, he's like, quick, rock, paper. I'm like, he's like, gives me the rock, paper, scissors. I'm like, okay, cool. So rock, paper, scissors. And then all of a sudden, he throws me like the, like the rock symbol. I'm like, what the hell? And he's like, he's like oh, let me tell me a little bit of a game about Jack Labrador. And then, I, and then I'm all of a sudden, I'm sitting at the table. And we play a game of what's referred to as Jack Labrador. I think you can find it on Board Game Geek. I think you can. All right, let me pull uh, this up. Because what they have here is a kind of a clever, silly little card game that's based on rock, paper, scissors. But it's Jack Labrador. So they've introduced themselves two new symbols. Think of rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock from... Uh, Big Bang, Big Bang Theory, but yeah. they've came up. They've come up with it. Oh, they don't have very many images. Okay, they just have this their their product designs. Anyways, uh, essentially, we've got the rock paper scissors game that we all know and love, except for then we've got Jack, which is like the yeah this guy, and Jack beats all three rock paper and scissors, except for there's also what beats Jack then. Well, then there's the Labrador, which is like the old Dr. Evil pinky mm. type thing. So the Labrador beats the Jack. Jack beats everything else. Everything else beats the Labrador type thing. So there's this very interesting mm. new thing that's going on. They made a card game out of it. And the very card game is very silly, very much like war, but we're mm. playing with rock, paper, scissors. And what really gets me in this card game is that there's all these super interesting cards that like break the rules and make you challenge opponents around the table to like what they call Jack Labrador. So you just go Labrador and then you throw down your symbol <laughs> okay. type thing. It was silly fun. I got given, they gave me a whole bunch of decks of cards to bring back to Canada and I've been playing it with my game nights. I've been showing like my, my, my kids love this version of rock, paper, scissors. My son's like, this is like the best rock, paper, scissors ever. And I'm like, cool. So I'll, we'll, we'll throw it down. So we play like a quick game in the morning, right before they go off to school. Like it, the card game is very quick. It, it actually comes with three different types of card games that you can play with just this silly system of rock, paper, scissors, Jack uh, Labrador. It is just kooky, crazy fun. That's all I can say it as. Um, I never thought that I would actually like, I'm not drawn to these types of games uh, typically, but there's, I found a little bit of charm mm -hmm. in this one just because it was what it, it was a very nice break in the con. It allowed me to shut my brain off for a bit and just like have fun without actually having like to think about things or anything like that. And the gentlemen over at the game, at the game booth there, they were fantastic individuals. They, they sold their game very well. They presented themselves very well. Uh, yeah, it was, it was great. So I, I wear the hat. They gave me the hat to wear on streams to, to kind of bring out if people are asking about it, Hey, I get to tell them about it. I'll tell people about it tonight. Uh, they, this is my review copy. They gave me, it actually comes with a serialized poker chip in the game right. too. Yeah. I got my, that technically that my kids, yeah, you can kind of see it right there. I'm trying to find it. There it is. There's mine. Yeah. It's got a serialized poker chip that right now, technically my son owns because he won the latest version of that particular game that he won the poker chip. So it's technically in his possession. 
What? Um, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that that's the whole that's the whole thing. Um, we haven't done this one yet because I'm always too afraid of marking up cards or anything like that. Um, you remember the old school drag races where people would sign over their pink slips, pink slips, yeah, for, for their car. Yeah. You can play pink slip in this game. Oh my goodness! And therefore, you can win this one time card. If you play the game, you can play this one time card. You can sign the pink slip with the date and your signature and everything, and you can own the card for life. So practice up on your Jack Labrador skills and challenge somebody to the pink slip game and then win that you're winning the pink slip from the game. <laughs> Holy the, mackerel. The, 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 <laughs> the, the marketing that they did with this game was actually really quite cool. It's really quite clever. It, they, they were fantastic the way they sold it. Uh, and then the, the the flagship game inside the box is called Motor City Showdown, mm-hmm. which is the one that we play every morning. It takes about like 10 minutes to play through like the entire, you just go through the entire deck of cards. And that's the one with all their really crazy abilities and stuff like that. It's just, it's just great. It's just crazy. That sounds yeah. fun. Oh, it. So, um, so, I'm, so I'm, I'm getting I'm, ready now. If someone challenges me to rock, paper, scissors, it, and I just bring out the, no, bring out the pinky. Cause they, they, you know, they yeah. want up to you, but if I can one up them. Yeah. And then, then they have this system because there's certain ways to do it too. There's certain cards that you'll play. And they'll say, run it to 10. So they actually have a point scoring system based on this. So everything mm-hmm. gets one point. Everything, every win is a one point, except for if the Labrador beats Jack, that's three points. Oh, oh cool. right there. Yeah. So that's that the big sense. one. So everybody wants to throw this one down. But then, you know, I'll just throw down a paper, beat that Labrador. Then somebody's like, well, I'm just going to play. I'm going to play Jack now. So, no, I'll play Labrador now. And. Oh yeah, me, me and my son have got like this whole meta game going down now where he says, I'm like, okay, let's let's run it to 10. He's like, let me think. And he'll sit there. And I'm like, what's there to think about? Let's just do it. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> last time you played, last time you played Jack, and then I played this, and then you did that. And I he's like, I feel like this, I think I got it now. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's silly fun. And I like it. <laughs> nice. So not so- everything is all heavy euro. Ashes Reborn on Mr. Al's channel. I do like cool little party games every now and then. And that's one of them. Jack Labrador. So one thing I will say is one of my favorite things, because for those who don't know, um, the other random thing I do on the side is a podcast around the show, Supernatural. And uh, one of my favorite things is Rock, Paper, Scissors on the show. The character Dean always plays Rock. Because there's literally a line in the show in season seven where Dean says, uh, I had to look it up. How does paper beat rock? It's stupid. And but he always plays rock, so <laughs> Sam always knows to play paper. So I'm just laughing thinking about rock, paper, scissors now. Uh look, Ryan, before we jump into reviews, I'm gonna throw a quick audible and I just want to throw a challenge out to both of you. I'll mention it really quick. What's on my mind for this question? So I wanted to throw out there if in terms of looking ahead to you know the coming days slash month what's something you're looking forward to i'm going to throw out that i am looking forward to hopefully picking up life in Ratera, uh, eric lang game simple little mm-hmm. game that's going to be on the target shelf i think in a few days uh tile laying and uh in, in rebuilding this community of in a after like a like just everything has gone to hell um so apocalypse type stuff but uh simple little it looks to be a, a neat little game and i'm hope, looking forward to picking that one up so uh that that's one thing i'm looking forward to cool i'm looking forward to an expansion to one of my favorite games ever orleon uh orleon the plague uh i pre-ordered it was supposed to have a release of february 28th and uh still on pre-order so <laughs> <laughs> i'm hopeful that i could get it so we could play it there we go okay well what i am looking forward to is picking up my copy i literally just got a message like half an hour ago <laughs> during the stream that my buddy who owns the game store here in saskatoon told me that my copy of madara Unintentional Malum Act One has finally arrived. Mm. And he says, 
bring a he told me like bring a dolly cart or something he says this this thing is big and it's heavy and i'm like i am so excited because apparently it's supposed to be like the ultimate jrpg experience as a board game instead of a video game and i was a huge fan of jrpgs way back in the day chrono trigger fantasy final fantasy all those types of things um and this just looks like it brings that to the tabletop experience as a campaign style game. Nice. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for going with my uh, random idea that I had five seconds before I said it, but uh, <laughs> that was fun. Okay. Uh, thing. Reviews. Reviews. Okay, Let's it. talk about, I guess, okay. nope. Nope. you. Sure. Because we got Mr. Rao here. And I want to make sure that we talk about at least one that I know we can all talk about. So let's first talk about Legacy of You. This was a 2023 game designed by Shem Phillips. Artist was Sam Phillips and publisher was Garfield Games. Uh, This is a game in which thematically you are playing until you have seven victories or you have lost seven times. You are trying to fight off barbarians meanwhile dealing with a whole rebuilding uh rebuilding to fight a flood uh and it has a story layer to it uh with a small little book and we could talk to the story and story quality certainly but the the concept is that you're going to get changes uh with every round of the game and it is going to look like a Shem Phillips, uh, Sam Phillips game. It's going to have uh, strong iconography, uh, at least in my opinion. I think the iconography is for the most part really strong. Uh, it is going to play like a worker placement. So even though I will sometimes, as I talked about this, I think as I even talked to, to you about it, Ryan, I said, it's got a Hadrian's wall vibe. Uh, it's definitely different in this sense that you are worker placement. Uh, and you are going to be collecting resources to pay off to, to complete cards, to continue to be able to move your ship down, uh, this canal and to escape the flooding waters. Uh, meanwhile, you're going to be using these resources to potentially, uh, uh, clear more spaces for more worker placement spots, you're also going to be trade your resources in to trade to get other resources back. And as you unlock more of those spots on the canal, you're going to be able to do that. Uh, last but not least, I, I will note with this is the farther you unlock those, the more barbarians are going to come out on every turn and you got to deal with the barbarians and you can appease them or you can defeat them. But if the barbarians completely own the top of the board, you've lost. Or if the flood has completely taken over, you've lost. And it takes place, like I said, over seven wins or seven losses. I think my play took 10 or 11 games. Uh, Mm -hmm. What about both of you? I'm not sure where you... So you were 10. Yeah, I was at 11. Yeah. Uh, It's... Oh, by the way, yeah, I I, I gotta point this out too. Um, Storage system in this box is fantastic a very resettable experience that I can speak to actually because I played through this game and then I said, all right, Ryan, you got to play this reset the game and handed it to him. Mm -hmm. And there's the storage. It's it's so well designed that and a good size box. It's it, it it fits everything and it's not more space than it's needed, which made me happy. So gameplay wise, I I'll, I'd love to know what you guys both thought. Um, for me, yes, it w- it was not the most diverse experience in terms of different mechanics coming in. Like it wasn't like extreme changes, right? But it was a nice, consistent feel game to game with a few new things. There, that's the kind of balance I think they were trying to strike with it. Uh, at least that's what it was for me. Uh, it was one where I was enjoying every single game. Uh, and when these new cards came out or these new things got introduced and I don't want to spoil it for anybody, there's one moment where a card came out that I was like, 
damn it, this this thing kicks me off, and it threw me off for like a, for a game and a half. Uh, but there wasn't anything that made me go wham, wow, like blew my mind. But consistently across the board, there was enough new stuff being introduced in this that I really enjoyed it across ten plays. I don't want to also say I don't think I solved it in any way not that i was looking to quote unquote solve the game uh but at the same time i definitely developed much clearer strategies by the end of the game yeah yeah i'll i'll reflect some a lot of that stuff um i what in the in the very beginning those were it was in the very beginning where most of my losses actually occurred when i was actually trying to learn and play through the game uh trying to realize what exactly what was going on so like i my campaign is that i lost my first two uh games at, right away yep. and once i kind of figured out i was like okay i think i need to go this route in my strategy as soon as i flipped that switch and i started doing this one particular thing every single game i was starting to win more then I was losing. I still lost a couple just because a, a couple. I think in in the end, uh, it was it was a particular. Some of those other games were just particularly just I think just really bad setup at the very the very original like barbarian state yep. that got introduced. And I, and I it was very hard to recover from the early game in some of those games. Um, but rather, my strategy ended up being pretty solid. And I don't know if I now if I start. A brand new campaign with all of that in mind i don't know how many times i'm gonna lose per yeah. se type thing yeah i ran into the same exact thing um i my first my losses were all in the beginning and upon finding a specific strategy and just sticking with it i won every single game to the end mm. um and that you know it, it was more like the discovery of that and i don't know honestly if i have interest to play the campaign again other than to see if i will get to the same result with fewer losses do you know what i mean because there's only seven yeah. you, you know the game ends when you either get seven victories or seven losses yeah um i i will give it this um i really like the fail forward kind of approach to this it doesn't matter if you win or lose you always move on to the next stage if you lose they're going to give you something that's going to benefit you. If you win, they're just going to give you something that hinders you. Um, and that's just how that's every single time. I'm not, you know, I'm doing my best to not include any spoilers. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there's a there's a big book, not a big book. There's like a, a you know, a, a book that is going to uh, kind of go through. Yeah, that, there is this, the story book. Now, that story book correlates to different cards that whenever you defeat one uh sometimes if it has a story card on it uh it it will you read that chapter uh, that area in the book and it's effectively like longer flavor text with just mm -hmm. whatever it tells you to do um the writing i don't think is 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 great at all to be perfectly honest i kind of just like eh, diggity, diggity, diggity. okay there <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Okay, cool. Uh, next, and then uh, so you know it, it 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 it's and it's more so like take a card from this deck and now you add it to this one. Um, it's not really like changing the game. The game really didn't change, and I felt like towards the end, I was a little bit in autopilot with just that same strategy. Um, regardless of what cards were coming out and what situations, what resources I had um, overall is kind of the same strategy. Um, but I did enjoy in particular, the mechanic of the, uh, the, the river, the river getting uh, flooding you mm -hmm. out because the whole point you, the, the objective every single game is you need to build the canal which is that middle, you know, river kind of thing. Uh, and that boat is the the uh, is the next step of the canal you need to build. So you spend those resources to build that canal. So when the when the wave moves forward, 
it has a spot to move forward onto because if it doesn't and it hits your boat, then you get flooded. Um, so what's cool about that is that the flood only moves forward anytime you need to reshuffle your deck of cards. Yep. So whenever you reshuffle your deck, that river flood thing is going to move forward. So you have control over that to some degree. You can kind of plan it out like, okay, I don't need to rush building this because I'm not going to get hit with the flood. Because the other challenge is that anytime you build areas for the flood, you're going to increase uh, the awareness of the barbarians. And it's going to more and more going to be coming in and taking out your, your market up above. So there is a balance that you're always playing with. Um, and I did like that because it made the game tight. It never it never overstayed its welcome in this game. It just it, it felt very tight throughout every play of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I agree. I felt like that was there was a nice balance with that. I did feel a little bit what you felt at the end, what you've talked about too. I, I feel like you know by the end I kind of figured out what I wanted to do to some extent, and I felt a lot more confident at the end. It didn't. I I don't want to say it ruined my experience because I think I, th- I thoroughly enjoyed the playthrough and it didn't take too long nor too short uh the replayability is something i'm gonna test and i'm gonna try this again uh certainly but i i enjoyed the overall playthrough i enjoyed the experience and i think if you don't normally solo or like maybe solo solo games are newer to you and you like work or placement other pieces other that style of gameplay i should say i think this can be a really good way to experience that because it doesn't do that drastic change. Now there's something, and I think I've, we've talked about this, Ryan. Hmm. I think this was, this grew from some great idea. It felt like it grew some, from some great ideas of Hadrian's wall. And I agree with something that I think you've said to me. So I don't want to speak for you, but I feel like, man, I would like, I personally would love to see, where it could go from here. Cause I really felt this was a strong system and I want to see more of this style. Cause I really liked it. Even if at the end, maybe it felt a little more samey than I would have liked. It still was fun for me. If it had stretched out four or five more plays, it would have been too long, but it, it didn't, it ended at a good point for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the design choices for this game felt a little safe, you know, Um, because I had such control with the deck and kind of understanding, okay, uh, I'm I'm able to generate these resources and focus on these specific kinds of things. I should be okay. And the other thing, too, um, it felt very, I'm just trading things for trading things for trading things for trading things, you know? Um, (laughs) And that's very similar. I mean, I get that impression with a lot of Garfield games I've played. You know, I take resources to trade them to other resources that I get to trade them for these resources that I get. Um, And this one for sure does that in spades. But again, because of how tight it is with the with the river, that part, you know, and how how it doesn't drag on too long, as opposed Mm -hmm. to some other Garfield games I've played. um, I feel like this this handles that very well. You know, like the pacing is good. I just wish it took some risks. You know what I mean? Like you have this awesome book that I felt like was completely underutilized with just flavor text and you add in some small things. I, that's that's that was my impression, at least. But. Nope. One hundred percent. When you said they it, it feels like they played it safe. That's how I will play it as well. Um, they had a lot of room to like, like, and I know what Chris is saying here too, where it's just like, yeah, you know, keep the experience game to game, quote unquote, same ish. Like don't let, 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 let's not overload the user with something completely out of the woods, but that's kind of like what I wanted. Like I wanted, like if I, if I do this, if I defeat this barbarian and he's got a story thing on him, I want something super drastic to happen now. Yeah. Yeah, it never did. And it wasn't like drastic. Yeah. Like there there was one moment I was like, well, that was annoying. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it wasn't like 
drastic. I'm like, I'm like, oh, or there, I, it didn't provide me with an experience where I'm like, oh, yeah, that is that that was cool. Yeah, like it didn't provide me with a wow factor. Right. And there's so many other legacy kind of games and campaigny kind of games that have taken me to that that level. You know, so I I I you know I see this in comparison to like Undaunted. Uh, uh, Stalingrad that we that we've been playing a bunch, and the level that that game is going is insane. And yeah. seeing how this game is going, and yeah, it's adding legacy kind of mechanics, but you know, it's kind it kind of feels like no matter what direction you're gonna go, you're gonna still it still feels kind of on the rails. You know, I mm-hmm. still don't feel like I have a lot of. There's a there's there's not a lot of twists and turns. It's very much yeah. like yeah, okay, I guess that's what we do. <laughs> I like the and like you said, I like that fail forward system. Like that that's yeah. that that's great. That's great. Um and 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 what what you get as either your uh, bonus or your yeah. deficit is going to be random depending on how you shuffled up that deck of cards. I want to know what my next playthrough because I felt like one of my early losses gave me a bonus. And I felt like that bonus, you know, like getting it so early in the game was tremendous in my, 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 my strategy. I wonder, I wonder if we have the same bonus. Okay. Because I thought I was like, compared to some of the other bonuses that you would get from losing, like I looked through the deck. I had to at the very end because yeah. see let's just see the i'm like I did too. that one felt like it was the strongest and i yeah. got it very early yeah in, in, i, in I had a very person. early strong bonus that lasted me the entire game and a lot of my choices for what cards to play and what to get focused on that one bonus i had so i, I wonder I, if i had if i just was lucky to get that bonus in my first game next time Mm-hmm. And just play with that bonus. I'd be interested, by the way, in coming back, as, as, in particular, you, Mister Al, and just like because I'm going to play through it one more time and see where we're where we're at and what we're thinking. Because with all this said, I did really like this game, and I like a lot of what it brought to the table. I think, I think you're you're right. I, I think again, I think calling it the calling decision making safe is probably the right word but i think it in my opinion it opens the door for more of this this, this still felt different and unique in its own right oh yeah what they did with this game and i want more of it i think that's my biggest takeaway from all of this as you're hearing me talk about this i want more of this and i'm gonna see where it can go because it felt different than anything i had played and it played in 30 to 45 minutes for me, depending on the game. So it wasn't like it was a big, you know, and I could just mm-hmm. easily put it away. Oh, yeah. The setup and tear down great. Yeah. So, like, it, it was, again, overall, definitely an experience I very much enjoyed. Um, oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it was very much that way, Brian. You know, it was just yeah. like, a, oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't want to put it away because if i it's it's it, it, it's for me they they they, t- they took the safe design approach for me i'm taking the safe gameplay approach i'm gonna i'm gonna abuse that power as much as i can possibly can yeah and like i said like i think you said for you you used it for the entire game i used mine for the entire game as well so i'm yeah. thinking we're thinking of the same thing oh the same one <laughs> we're gonna have to check after once we go off air um so let me put the question to you i mean look obviously for me visually it looked great i think mechanically sound um i think mechanically sound and the big thing that i hit on that i want to hit on is something you said ryan which is it does feel tight yeah even if it felt to your point because that balance though of the barbarians versus the canal and i did like that too from a score perspective, very interested. Uh, we'll we'll start at the top here. Uh, if Mr. F, you got to give this a, on a scale of a one to a ten, where does this fall for you? You do points too. Yeah, you can point. It. You can do an eight point four, yeah. eight point five, eight point six. Yeah. So like, I'm I'm coming at it too that this was my 
my my my my second favorite gaming experience of 2023. Um, I I I spouted that off my channel. I still really really enjoyed it. Uh, for me, it's still going to be that replayability factor after the fact. Um, and 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 the fact that if I do play it again, um, knowing that I did have a strat, am am I going to try? I I I feel like I don't want to try something and that that speaks volumes to me because i'm always the guy like okay that worked that last game i'm going to try something this this game this one felt like for me i didn't want to do that because i wanted to get those seven victories in the end. and that i want to try to get that as as, as early as possible uh i'm still gonna i'm just gonna still gonna give this like a solid like I'm not going to put it as high as an eight, but it's definitely better than a 7.5. So I'm going to give it like a 7.7, 7.8 type thing for me. And I'm also interested because there is, we didn't really talk about like the different types of buildings oh, yeah. that you can build across yeah. this. Like there's the one that gives you, there's the ones that give, they're the kind of like the orangish ones. They kind of give you like a, a some sort of income at the beginning of every round. Then there's like the purple ones that give you like the flexibility in the workers. Yeah, uh, allowing workers to be substituted for other workers, and then there was the huts that allows you to give extra abilities to tuck cards underneath your board for income. Uh, also, also giving you an extra worker placement spot to give you some sort of bonus. Uh, did you re- did you rely on one or the other in your gameplays? Because I found myself always utilizing the purple huts. Yeah, and the purple getting huts the- were crucial. Yeah, um, getting that flexibility in the colors. But yeah, then yeah. I didn't really use any of the orange ones. Yeah, the, at well, all. the 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 thing is uh the purple ones for sure because at least the white workers can be used as one of the army workers, which is mm-hmm. always nice. And then your army workers can be used as a standard workers, which is again always nice. Um so purple for sure was the biggest one. And then Honestly, I, I didn't mix them up as much as I could. And part of the excitement was having spots to kind of, uh, you know, take those green buildings off and have spots to tuck. And there's a balance, right? Because in this kind of game, I want to control that deck. So I want that deck to be really big as possible until I feel really confident. So I'm not tucking as much as I'd like to. So I did focus probably on the orange and the green as much in priority, but the purple one was the highest priority. Mm-hmm. I will say I did a lot of the, the, I went heavy with tucking at one point because I love that mechanic as a whole. Yeah. Um, But I did always want to get as many of those worker options. So I Which played tucking, by the way, games. gives you different benefits at the yeah. start of your turn. At the start of your turn, you collect number of resources during the harvest phase. And yep. these just, are just giving you additional resources yeah. to gather. Um, so I did like it. I felt like it did sour towards the end. If I didn't finish it, I think I would have gave it a higher rating, to be honest. Um, so I'm coming in with a 7-4 on this one because I still really, I still did enjoy it. And I do, and I, I would recommend it if you like this sort of, if you like this sort of game, want a quick to set up a tight kind of. Oh, yeah uh solo game um but again i feel like a lot of parts were just lacking and i wish it i want to see the next legacy of you you know i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this out there i'm gonna give it an eight but it's an eight because on a replay i might end up needing to drop it because i want to see what that experience is the second time around and it could be it falls in that 7.8 to 8.0 range and i'm gonna bump it up to an eight just because i'll be honest it was a really great experience that did not overstay its welcome for me again had i played this three or four more had it had me take me three or four more times and it been very same as i probably would have felt differently but it's a solid eight for me. I think overall, I agree with you, Ryan. I think if you like this style of game, this is very much the style I like. Um, but I want to see where it goes. So I think this this opens a door, and I really hope they take it. That's, yeah. that's and honestly, it. I feel like it's so apparent because we've been playing 2023. I think has been a, a fantastic year for solo gaming, and there's been so many solo games that have 
I felt like are pushing this envelope and legacy of you could have, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, no, I agree with with that. Yeah. So everybody, that would be our thoughts on legacy of you. Um, By the way, this was a copy I purchased. This was not a review copy of any kind that um, Ryan and myself played. And uh, Mr. I believe you bought your copy as well. If I'm not mistaken. Yep. 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 Like to clarify that. So, that's legacy of you and uh i will let uh you ryan lead us into our last review of the night sky tier horde yes i'm excited to hear about this have you played it i have not okay this is this is high on a watch and i want to learn about it so teach me grandmaster espen okay about sky tier horde sky tier horde Published by Sky Tier Games, designed by Giacomo Neri, Ricardo Neri, artist by Ricardo Parmigi- Parm- Parmigiani. Um, okay, look. Sounds delicious, pasta. It, it does, right? It does. <laughs> um, we're talking about solo games. This is a solo game. You want a, a tower defense game? This is a solo tower defense Technically, game. Technically, you can play co op. I want to. Make sure you I can play it co-op. You can play this. You co-op. can also play where one player controls the bad guys, but largely you're playing this for solo. Okay? Yes, um, this is the game. This is it set up pretty much. Um, so you are going to be controlling uh, a different faction, um, which have fancy names, but for now I'll stick with blue, red, and green decks <laughs> of factions, um, and you're fighting different hordes out which also have fancy names, but we'll just do, I don't know, they're purple ones. Purple? Um, they're all purple, but like purple, all purple. Skull versus purple with like a bull symbol. Um, what's going to go on in this game is very much, you're collecting mana to play different cards. Sounds like a magic kind of thing. Um, but you're putting them in different lanes to fight different bad guys that are be coming out. Um, not only that, your draw deck is a deck of, I believe, 40 cards. And the game could end in a loss if your deck ever runs out of cards. Because mm-hmm. what's going to go on is this row over here are the bad guys. This row are the minions. And the minions, at the end of every turn, will pillage your deck based on the number of health points they have. So six health points means the top six cards of your deck are gone. You're you're, you're already way closer to losing. <laughs> Um, it is very difficult to win Sky Tier Horde, yeah. but it's a very straightforward experience to play Sky Tier Horde. Um, so what's going to go on is you'll be playing these different cards out. You'll collect different mana. You're also trying to defeat this portal card over here, which at the start of every turn will indicate how many bad guys comes out. So it'll be like one bad guy comes out. Then at the end of the turn, you rotate the card because there's numbers on, on all four sides of the cards. So now that number is how many bad guys come out. Rotate it again. That number of bad guys comes out. Eventually, you'll destroy that and go on to level two, in which case the big bad is going to come out. And the whole objective of you to win is to kill the big bad. There's a lot of ways to lose, though. <laughs> um, <laughs> lots. A lot of ways to lose Sky Tier Horde, because you're also defending your castle, which has the health points of, like, 20 health points. So it feels like a kind of Magic the Gathering kind of game, but in a solo setting. And that's how it's largely pitched out. Um, This box, by the way, is not the box size it comes in. It's more of like a rectangular. I'll I'll grab it. Kind of thing, um, which is very appealing. Uh, So box size is pretty solid. Um, And yeah, that's Sky Tier Horde largely. Yeah, there's, there's the box. This is the box. Cool. Small box. Um, there are some, there's a new expansion coming out called Sky Tier Horde Monoliths. And there's also like a promo deck for both good guys and bad guys. And I heard the promo deck is fantastic, mm. but it's also like more, it caught co- it. The game cost me like 20 something bucks on Amazon. And the ex- promo deck is, I think it's like 35 only directly from the retailer. Oh, so dear. yeah, weird, <laughs> but the cards play all differently. The decks do play radically different, which is nice. Um, 
So there is a lot of variety in this one. However, be prepared for likely losing in Sky Tier Horde. It is very difficult to win Sky Tier Horde. Did you did you win Barrows? No, no, yeah. not at all. Um, <laughs> it, it's it, it's really interesting. It's it, it really is very tactical in the way that you're trying to to play this game. The comparison is fair that they have on BGG of of other competitive deck battlers that you might have played. Uh, you know, so Magic the Gathering comes up, but even Keyforge or something that, uh, you know. Oh, yeah. And I liked this one uh, quite a bit with the, uh, with just some of the decisions that you had to make about what you can attack because you could eventually, you got to choose to attack Dominions at some point because you could say, oh, they're a little annoying. They're a little annoying. And then suddenly your deck is half gone and you're like, oh, man, what am I going to do? But then you've left open a spot and the monster across from you now is attacking the castle and the castle's down to 10 hit points. And you're like, Oh, but the castle, Oh, but the minions. And the, oh, and yeah. so it's, it's a lot of fun to try to figure it out. And my thoughts on this one were, I want, I, I was very much interested in the three different, I think it's three different factions that come. Yeah. It's three different factions. Right. But like, green. The fact was, yeah, there was room for more for me too because I could see. All right, I think I figured this one. Like over time, eventually, it definitely had that room for growth, which obviously you've just kind of spoken to already about more coming. But it was really interesting choice wise for me, and I have uh, I got a play, but about a play and a half in of it just to really. And this was within the last twenty four hours, so this is fresh in my mind. Uh, pretty quick to pick up and figure out how to play. And mm. it did not take me long to learn. I watched half of a, maybe half of a YouTube video at one point to learn a few questions I had, but that was just to make sure that I had everything in the right spot with the, in particular, I think it was with the minions. Yeah. Cause I was like, do the minions need to be here or here? Or does it matter? Cause as long as I'm putting the, the health points on them, I guess that's really the big thing. But once I figured that out, I was good. And yeah, I it, it's a it's a game that I you know because you're here, I will say this is I think a very Mr. Rao game. It's a very right. Mr. Rao game. Yes. Yeah. Don't say that. I'm sorry. It is a very Mr. <laughs> Rao game. It, it is though. It it really is. So is. then by and then then by the trickle effect, this will also be a Tyler game well he, well he already said the he, he's already saying that in the chat too <laughs> he's gonna add it to his wish list <laughs> um, this sounds uh, yeah. everything like you've said all of the right things and got the juices just flowing just in the right direction here just to get my brain have the website on this other screen over here looking uh -oh. at the prices in canadian dollar redos so yeah uh keep going okay all right so <laughs> We just have the retail version. There was a crazy Kickstarter one. Um, yep. And there is a Kickstarter campaign for the for the expansion. Now, the thing about this game, it's very tower defensive. Oh, yeah. By the way, yeah. this is this is the, the base. It, yeah. So this is what it looks like on the inside, just so you can see. Very quick setup, too. And a lot of, you know, there, there is variability for sure. Um, and depending on what cards come out and when they come out is crucial because what's going to go on is this there's a phase where the minions come well the, the bad guys come out and then after you're done with your turn the treachery phase happens so you flip over the next card of the bad guy deck and you don't play it as a bad guy you just play it for its treachery which will either be beefing up a specific guy in a specific bad guy or doing some bad effect and it will tell you what that effect is. Um, so depending on what cards come out as bad guys versus treachery cards is very important. Because if it comes to a point where this crazy bad guy comes out in the beginning, that could change your game completely versus like a lesser bad guy. And they're all on the bottom, you know. Um, so there is wild variability there because of that luck factor, which I don't like in games. To, to some degree you know um it's not the worst i played with that it's just that that aspect i didn't like um and tower defense largely as a genre i'm usually not a fan of 
with one gleaming, shining example exception of Halls of Hegra. Largely every other tower defense game I played hasn't really landed for me. This included like Pavlov's house, you know, the Sylveon kind of game, like those kinds of games. Like this game, I like better than those, but definitely not as much as Halls of Hegra, for sure. And this one, just so everyone knows, it's essentially the 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 way the the rulebook describes gameplay is there's seven phases, refresh phase, which you don't do on the first turn. Uh, the yeah. first round. Well, you get or... you gain mana, which is which is nice. And the mana that you gain is based on what portal is out there. And it's and it's that it's this bar that's right here. So yeah, most you could ever have is like ten mana, and you're using that mana to you know yeah. play more cards. So it's always like a balance of what cards do I play when, and should I wait for that build up? But the longer you wait, the more you're gonna smack in the face. So you know. Yeah. That there's a horde phase where the monsters come out. There's an alliance phase where you're playing your cards and using your abilities. The treachery phase where that's the card that empowers come coming out. The yeah. fight phase, the pillage phase, and then the end phase. So seven phases, but they're really straightforward. I do want to answer this question before we get to our kind of ratings too. But Tyler asked, is it a large table presence? And honestly, this is I, it. That's it. This yeah, is it. that's the table Titties. presence. Just stop. Just stop. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm just short of putting my credit card information into a computer right now. <laughs> All right. So uh, again, from my perspective of my tower defense, not liking perspective, but appreciate solo gaming a lot and appreciate like it's not like the quickest setup, but it's also not like crazy intricate. You know, it's not. It's it, you know. Look, I'm gonna give it literally the same rating as Legacy of You. It's a seven four for me. That's my rating. Yeah. No, and I think it's fair. Solid. It's fine. Still solid. Saying, for me, it's seven four. I'm saying seven five, and I wanna. I'm probably gonna play this a few more times, but I think that's a pretty much because. I like tower defense games. I like solo games a lot more now than I did, you know, two years ago. I partially blame meeting you for why I like solo games more now. Um, the only one we'll probably disagree on is Final Girl, but um, because I like Final Girl, but 7.5. Uh, and it's solid. It's a, just this is a solid game, and I think this is gonna be an eight or higher, or it's gonna be a real for you a game for a lot of people no oh, no okay. i just think i think a lot of people this is going to hit for you if you want that <laughs> tower that tower experience like that defend the castle kind of it works and they did it really well so i think uh, it's worth it for 20ish bucks if you can oh, get yeah. it for 20ish bucks it's worth it okay so stop putting my credit card information into the computer okay so i'm just i'm just saying for, yeah in my opinion 25 bucks, I think it's worth it. You know? Yeah. Honestly, um, this is this is a game. I'll I'll be candid. Not at the full MSRP, but if this game was 50% off at some point, even though it's not usually the one I would probably play, I would even grab it. It it, it it's I it's don't even it, the full it was MSRP an enjoyable yet. experience. So uh I liked it quite a bit. I would like to play with at least one of the other one of the ones I didn't get to play with because I've got to play with two of them. Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. So great job. I thought they do with this. I'll be interested with the expansions though. I was looking at the challenge expansion and I will just say it was described as introduced a new system to set the difficulty level. <laughs> so, so are they making it harder? Cause it yeah, make... and, and the thing is too, it's also the kind of player, like I'm not, I'm not like a magic kind of person, you know, so it may not, I, I don't think it's scratching my itch for that, you know? Um, in all this talk, Ryan, is I think you really need to give Ashes Red Reigns a shot. Okay. For that. I think, I think Ashes Red Reigns will give you, I think, the card game experience, not the tower defense. Yeah. There's no tower defense, unless if you just count your person as the tower type thing it says everything's coming at you but um 
I think it'll, I think there's aspects of ashes that you will appreciate more than what's probably being offered in this experience. Okay. Well, I am eager to play ashes. Yeah. Yeah. Because as you as you keep talking about it, and I'm very intrigued. I'm glad you say this is a Mist Rao style game. I think you I, would like it. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to think it in the comparison of I have this one game that I absolutely love and adore in Ashes right, right now, and I'm it's it, everything's gonna everything from this point forward in history is gonna get compared to Ashes. Yeah, uh, uh, rightly so because I love the system that they've developed there. So. Yeah, if I can grab this, if I can grab this uh, at like a con or an auction or something for cheap, I would definitely want to try it. Um, I saw that this was in the Dice Tower West library, uh, but I just never, ever saw it on the shelf. I think some groups just kind of kept taking it out every now and then. So I wanted to get it tried. Well, for everybody, that will be, that's our two reviews for tonight. We definitely have some other ones we have planned but uh we have played some of these games with anthony so we're probably gonna have more than a few uh more than a few in our next episode of call aboard which by the way our next topic for call board in two weeks two weeks is going to be a big one i'm very excited it is going to be our favorite games from 2023 oh my goodness and- and I just want to note, I'm on, I think I'll have played about 50 games from 2023 by the time we get to that. And we'll be naming, I believe, our top 10 when we do that list. I think we're sticking to top 10. We're bringing the board back, right? The board's back. All right, cool. Cool. Right on. So It's a really big shoe. Really big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll cue up the music. You ready? All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming aboard the Hit the Topic Craft. They cut you out. I'm not letting you cut me out. We say next week playthrough. We'll have a video drop, and then see you two weeks called aboard. Have a great night, everybody, and thanks for coming aboard to Hit the Topic Express. And thank you, Mr. Rao.